A very warm welcome to all Steel Timber Sports fans around the world as we are coming to you live from St. Kilda in Australia for the Australian Trophy in the men's competition and the Australian Championship in the women's competition. This is going to be an absolutely great season 2021 and a great competition. Speaking of great, as always by my side, our expert Troy Mannering. Welcome. Hey guys, how's it going out there? Looking forward to this competition today, Marcus. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, above all, we've got a bunch of women in here that are going to be kicking some butt. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing these ladies in action. It's going to be the first time seeing them on an internationally broadcast level. So this is going to be really cool. And then, of course... We have our men's competition in trophy format, which is so fast, so furious, and so fun. I'm looking a lot forward to this particular show today. Oh, I can't wait. This is uh, really getting to be great. And of course, a big shout out uh, to all spectators in St. Kilda, all athletes uh, that are competing today. And of course, our crew and Dan and Gaius, who are going to be taking care of the competition in St. Kilda. And all you need to know about today's competition, well, that's coming up right now. The Steel Timber Sports Australian Trophy. At the Australian Trophy, athletes have to complete four disciplines back to back. From the start, they need to cut a whole disc with the stock saw within a marked 10 centimeter area. After that, they have to complete the underhand chop as fast as possible. Only after they split the block can they return to the starting point where this time the single buck is waiting for them to cut one complete cookie. As the last discipline, they have to complete the standing block chop in order to achieve the best possible overall time. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification. Well, you just heard it. This is what's going to be happening in the men's competition in the Australian Trophy. But of yep. course, now we're going to focus on the women's competition. And uh, all you need to know about the women's competition, well, take a look at this. The Steel Timber Sports Australian Women's Championship. Here's how the Australian Women's Championship will work. Each of our six athletes will compete in three disciplines. We start with the underhand chop. Points are awarded based on the time. Six points for first place, down to one point for sixth place. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. The second event is the stock saw. Points remain the same, awarded based on times from six down to one. The third discipline is the single buck and the athlete's last chance to claim some valuable points. The points from all disciplines are accumulated and the athlete with the highest points total will be crowned the new Australian Women's Champion. Well, now that we know how the format works, it's time to meet the ladies that are going to be rocking St. Kilda today. Yep. Let's take a look at the athletes. Well, there you have Chris Brown. Uh, she placed second in the pre-qualifier and looking to make her way onto the podium today. Pretty strong competitor. Uh, right after her, we've got Adele Devrel. And you can see her stats right there. Uh, she got sixth at the Australian Championship in 2019, 10th in 2018. So that's an improvement for her. And uh, she'll be I looking really to... nice tattoos. I like them. Yeah, she's uh, completely tattooed up on that right arm. So, you know, no messing around with these ladies here. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Coming up next, we have Katrina Head. So where is Katrina? Here she comes. And there you see, 36 years of age. She started logging over, tw and logger sports, excuse me, over 20 years ago. She, as you see, got fifth place at the Australian Championship in 2019. And she's had two appearances with a sixth in 2018. So a steady improvement of one spot per year. Let's see if she can double it up this time around. Jody Boytel, oh. you can see. <laughs> she looks dangerous. Yeah, she uh, she got third at the Australian Championships in 2019. Bronze medal there. Seventh in uh, 18 and sixth in 2017. And then, of course, Rene Ratschlag. You can see the uh, silver medalist from 2000 and. 
17 and 18. So a consistent player here. All, uh, as well as a person we want to keep a close eye on. And then, of course, Amanda Beams, the reigning Australian women's champion in steel timber sports. So what are you going to say? I mean, uh, you know, she is the one with a target on her back today for the other women in this competition. They're going to be focusing on trying to catch up with the strongest competitor in the field and the favorite. Oh, for sure. She's a bit of a legend, isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, let's go to the first uh, discipline. We've got the axe coming up in the underhand chop. And if you want to know more about uh, this discipline, take a look at this. Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes use an axe to cut through a 30 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Least your two time and competing against Adele Deverell. Then we have Katarina Head take on Jody Beutel. And in heat number three, it will be Renny Retschlag against Amanda Beams. Let's get this on, Troy. Yeah, it's going to be a tough battle in heat number three. Amanda Beams, the reigning champion against Renny Retschlag. So uh, looking forward to seeing that battle. And of course, uh, everybody's going to be fighting against the clock. This is not a one-on-one -on -one competition, but it's against the clock, trying to get the best time, trying to collect as many points as possible. Yeah, and let's not forget, these women only have three disciplines as compared to the men, where we have between four and six different disciplines. So it's, it's a short time frame in order to get the most points possible. So let's uh, take a closer look at the first heat. Chris Brown and Adele Deverell coming up for your entertainment now. Troy, off we go. All right, here we go. Our ladies coming up onto the stage. And there is your battle matchup. Chris Brown up against Adele Deverell. So Alrighty, world right. record for the underhand chop for our women is 44 and change. And uh, as you saw... Eighth place in the Australian Championship in 2017-2018 for Chris Brown. Adele Deverell, sixth place in 2019. So let's see how these two ladies match up. And it's a quick start for Adele Deverell on the far side. Chris Brown right there in front of you in the red shirt. Adele Deverell wearing the purple on the far side. Good axe from Adele Deverell as she's really swinging quickly. Chris Brown doing her best to try and get as much power in. You can see her sliding that hand right down to the end, end of the axe to try and really use the pressure and the weight of that axe head to her advantage. Adele Deverell already onto the other side as a distinct lead on Chris Brown at the moment as the time clicks away for them. Remember, we're looking at a world record for our women of 44 seconds. Oh my goodness, and we have an unofficial new world record with Chris Brown cutting in 40.45. That is exciting, already getting the action underway with a potential new world record. This is of course unofficial, and Chris Brown doing her best to try and get through that block. A couple more hits should do it. There it is, that last driver, and she is done. Chris Brown. And our clock stopped for some reason or another for Chris Brown at 40.45, but Adele Deverell with an unofficial world record. So let's see. But did I get that backwards? I think I might have. So that, that very, very good cut is going to be reviewed, and we'll have to find out very, very soon. All right, give a big round of applause one more time, please, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm just kidding. So Adele Deverell was definitely the faster of the two. Chris Brown wearing the red jersey on the front side of us. We're going to take a quick look at the slow-mos here. And uh, let's see. You can see the preparation swing by Adele Deverell on the far side was well ahead of Chris Brown, but she started right on time with the gun so there was no false start there or anything just to, to make it clear out there for our audience that's watching and you can see she's really working that axe quickly and then she got over to the other side a good five or six hits i'm going to say maybe even seven or eight hits ahead of chris brown and then you can see right here this final couple of drivers from adele deverell to get through that block in a possible world record time we're going to get that official call from our referee any minute now as there is the final hit and let's see all right and you can see as always the crews at the steel timber sports are so top-notch and so efficient at getting those stages switched over for the next heats that are coming up and of course all of them using steel equipment to make sure that stage is completely clean one of the things that's really important about this and and we've seen this a couple of times in the past is if any sawdust or any chips or any blocks are left on the ground there in particular for the standing block chop when an athlete tries to go around from one side to the other it becomes very slippery oh, so it's really the important that these guys do a really really good and efficient job of making sure that stage is completely two, clean because it's a safety aspect as well over to you please for the official word cross your fingers Hey, there you go. I think we've seen a new world record. All right, so it is official. We do have a new world record from Adele Deverell with a 40.12, obliterating the time of 44 and change. That is fantastic, and what an amazing way to start the competition here today. It's come down from a 300 mil way to lock down to a 275. So. Do we want to let Sarah keep? All right, coming up next. And there you see just a one last look at the world record of 40.12 by Adele Deverell. And Chris Brown was just a little, a little bit slower there. Um, and that is the official time as our audience is enjoying this already. Fantastic to finally have events back happening with audiences as well as we get ready with our next pairing, which will be Katarina Head and Jody Boitel. What a great start, Dan. That's why you make your way here to St Kilda, to see world records getting broken, just casually. And you can see here Dan and Gaz in the background talking about casual world records. Yeah, that looked casual. She was so good with that axe. Adele Deverell, a new world record holder. Could it be a day of world records for our women? So now we have Jody Boitel and Katrina Head coming on to stage. Katrina Head. There you see her stats there. She has been in this sport for over 20 years now. And Jody Heads finished the Australian Women's Championships in third in 2019. And uh, yeah, I mean, this should be a really good battle. The best score so far for Katrina Head has been a fifth in 2019. She had a sixth the year before, and she didn't compete in 2017, unfortunately. As we see, a quick check of Jody Boitel and Katrina Head. Now what they're doing with their axes right there is just putting a lube on in order to make sure that those first couple of hits into the block don't stick because that can be a time killer if that axe sticks in the block, which happens frequently. You'll see that definitely in today's competition, both with the women and with the men. Here we go. Two, one, go! 
Good start by both of these women. Katrina Head on the far side has the power strokes going, but she's not quite as fast as Jody Boitel. Excuse me, other way around. Jody Boitel is throwing those power strokes into that block. Meanwhile, Katrina Head using a little bit of a faster axe. She gets it stuck there. That's exactly what I was talking about. It takes energy to get that axe out. A quick slip off as she comes around to the other side, but resets. And that gives Jody Boitel an opportunity to come around and join her on that other side as well. Getting lots of appreciation from the audience as we can hear them in the background screaming and yelling and pushing their favorite athletes on. As the time winds down for both of these ladies, it's looking very close to getting through these blocks here. A few more drivers, and it's Katrina Head with a 48.67. That puts her in second place at the moment. Jody Boitel with those big power strokes finally gets through in a 56.93, and that moves her into third place, pushing Chris Brown down into fourth place. Before we do that, we'll of course hand it over to the judges. Let's get the official word to make sure that all the cuts are good. Over to you, Mr. Steve Laurent. All right, so we have the official call from the judges that both cuts are good, and that means we might uh, hear a couple of words. Good, actually. Um, I cut the front quite well. I um, had a bit of trouble staying on top to get around, um, but... Yeah, it's not too bad. I'll see what Jim says. Uh, are, you, are you enjoying being a part, of course, of the Steel Timber Sports being down here in Melbourne? Yeah, this is lovely. This is actually a kid-free weekend for us, so it's fantastic. And having Timber Sports here is just an icing on the cake, really. Perfect. Well, it's, it's fantastic to have you a part of it. Give a big round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. All right, it's heating up down here, Dan yeah, and Matt. Um, Who have we got for A kid-free weekend, boys? only parents will understand that. Really it's say, not meant in a bad like way. It's just meant Amanda that uh, it's fun to get out there and do something without worries. And here we see the slow-mos. And there it is. It's absolutely the quicker axe from Katrina Head that makes all the difference in the world here for her. Jody Boitel throwing those big, heavy strokes. But for every two strokes that Katrina Head was hitting, it was one stroke for Jody Boitel there. Here's where the problem came for Katrina Head. And it could be that she spent a good one and a half to two seconds there that her time would have been that much faster. And if you look at Katrina's time, 48-41, she might have even matched the old world record of 44 but uh, still a great time by Katrina Head there and uh, Jody Boitel with her time gets into third place and that you could see uh, absolutely spent both of these women in that battle. All right the official times are on the board Head with a time of 48 4 1 and then Butel with 55 9 8 15 seconds off the pace. Going up to, of course, our underhand leaderboard there with that world record. It's always lovely seeing the WR in any sport that you are watching. Gets the six points there with a blistering time of 40.12. Head 48.41. Butel 55.98. And then Brown just off the pace there with one minute 47. All right, Dan, do we want to introduce our next athletes for, of course, this next round of competition. All right, so we are almost done with the underhand chop. Let's not forget, we have two more disciplines to go after this. It's all about the time. So next up will be Amanda Beams and Renee Rech Rechlag. I hope I said that right. I don't want to butcher the names already. Uh, and, and Amanda Beams is the target athlete here today. We're just waiting for them to come out. And here we go. So there's Amanda with a big smile on her face getting ready to come out. She is the reigning Australian champion. And Renee Rutschlag, her best score or her best uh, results have been the uh, 2018 and 2017, excuse me. Both of those, she got the silver medal position in second place. She was fourth in 2019 in the Australian Championships. And uh, she has been wood chopping for the past six years. Meanwhile, Amanda Beams like is one of the like legends. She's well, been like in this sport since she was 16 yes, we years we old. So there the is a lifetime of experience judges, behind the 50-year-old. Yes, I said a 50-year-old, and that is amazing. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Go! So Amanda Beams in the light gray on the far side of your screen. 
<clears throat> Rene Retschlag in the pink. And there we see a frontal view of Amanda Beams working that log on the first side there and then switching over quickly to the other side. Retschlag still, ah no, she's now switched over to try and catch up with Amanda Beams. Amanda Beams is looking good. Wow. She's got about 10 seconds to go. Let's see if she can beat this world record. She's really close to getting through that log, and it might fall. It is going to fall. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely devastating hits there by Amanda Beams. Gets through in 36.50. Unbelievable. Eight seconds faster in total than the old world record that just dropped. That is insanity. Oh, my goodness. That's two world records today. Both of them dropping like flies. Eyes in a rainstorm. Unbelievable by Amanda Beams with a time of 36.50. Oh, that's got to be devastating for Adele Devrell. She held the world record for 40 seconds, it seems like. Oh, my goodness. It has to become official through our judges on stage and in the video center to make sure, but that, if becoming official, is just a fantastic time. Let's wait for it here. Heartbreaking, so super fast time. What happened with the uh, this, this decision? And they're taking a look at that log. There seems to be a video of your review. We're going to hear it now. Quite literally, babe, fantastic time there. You're looking very, very, we're obviously watching there. You turn in around that 20-second mark, so good. How's the wood today? Yeah, good. Good, good. A bit disappointing. Give a big round of applause. I tell you what, if it wasn't for that technical So it mistake, seems like there's an issue with record. one of the cuts so on the block. We're going to find bad. out shortly because it does seem like there's a bit of a disappointment there from Amanda Beams and that world record may not stand. So we'll wait and see what the official call is from our judges there. There's a lot of discussion going on in the video center and on the side of the stage as they took that block from her over to have the other judges take a look at it. And this is what's being done right now. Oh, there's a cut that goes across the footstep and that is very, very important. And that means it could be a disqualification here for Amanda Beams, which would be devastating. The logs are marked, and they do have foot pads there that the athletes stand on. We're going to take a look at the slow-mo. I don't know if we'll get to see that particularly in the slow-mo, but uh, we'll take a look here at the start of the slow-mo again. Both of these women just putting down a great performance. Rene Retschlag with a time of 47.97, also a really good time. We talked a lot about the potential world record there, but we completely forgot about mentioning that Rene Retschlag did have a great time of 47.97, so that actually puts her in second place. And we'll just wait for the judge's decision there. Maybe we'll, we'll get that on stage, but I do believe that it's going to be a disqualification. champion for 2021. All right, there we go. So that means that Amanda Beams, the reigning champion, moves down into sixth place with a cut on the foothold, and that's what our judge right there is pointing out for the camera. It was just too deep into the foothold, and that, unfortunately for Amanda, is a disqualification. And so Adele Devrell holds on to that official world record on the underhand chop for our women. Another world record would have been a 36 second time. That's all right. We saw one more record fall as the boys were held in the rain. Oh, my word. <laughs> These girls are awesome. I mean, yeah. we've, we've seen one official world record and another potentially a second one world record. Yeah. I mean, Amanda Beams, she's 50 I, I, and she's just working that yeah. axe. Awesome. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> everybody can be jealous. That is. Absolutely fantastic. So, so, so let's uh, take a look at uh, the final score of uh, the underhand chop. That should be coming up right now. And Troy, um, that is a bit of a surprise. I mean, Adele Deverell, she says the underhand chop is her favorite competition, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. crazy. 
Well, I mean, uh, you, you saw it right there. Anything can happen in these competitions. And uh, Adele Deverell gets to keep her world record for the moment. But unfortunately for Amanda Beams, it was just one or two cuts that went into the foothold. And that was it. That world record was done for. But how fast was she, really? It, it was definitely not the lack of speed. Yeah. Just uh, maybe the precision that, that got her to that CQ, right? Oh, my words. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I'm still out of breath. But uh, we have to move on to the next discipline. Uh, and, of course, uh, we're going to have the stock so coming up right now. And to use and make this all possible, the Steel MS661 is very important. More details on that coming up right now. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark. One downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. The steel MS661 CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. Let's get ready for the stock saw. Troy, uh, what is the most important thing in this discipline? Well, of course, <laughs> speed of getting the saw up. I mean, they get to start the saw, warm it up for 15 seconds before the competition. But uh, here it's about the pressure. If you add too much pressure, the saw blade or the, the, the chain could stall on the arm or on the blade of the saw. Uh, and if that happens, then, you know, you're, everything slows down and your time is killed. And if you're not putting enough pressure on, you're cutting slowly. So it's, it's a balance between too much and just enough pressure. It's, you know, this porridge is too hot. This porridge is too cold. You have to choose the middle ground. So let's take a closer look at the start list, ladies and gentlemen. So in the first heat, we'll see Renee Retschlag, and uh, she will take on Chris Brown. In heat two, Adele Deverell will be competing against Amanda Beams. And in heat number three, it will be Katarina Head against Jody Beutel. Let's get rocking. All right, so it's going to be the two women that had potentially world records there. Um, Adele Deverell has the world record, and uh, Amanda Beams could have had it. Uh, they're going to be battling in heat number two, but we're going to see Renee Retschlag and Chris Brown starting our competition off. So Renee Retschlag wearing the pink jersey and Chris Brown in the red. Now you can see the personal bests. Chris Brown definitely has the advantage as far as the personal bests are concerned. Uh, she's about six seconds faster in stock saw than right, Renee so is. Matt, of course, got red slag so uh, they're going to mark up their blocks and there. And uh, Brown, it's really important here to get two clean bed. cookies. One. Now, something they have to pay attention to is they have to cut within a certain amount of space on the block. You can see on the block the there fourth. is the black line. They have to be able to cut two clean cookies from that black line. Now, a clean cookie means that it's a complete cookie, no cutouts, and no breaks. 15 seconds to warm up the saw. And you'll see also there's a pad on the ground underneath the saw. In most cases, I, I don't see it there, but maybe it's just because the black matting underneath where they're standing uh, is blocking it out. But those pads also stabilize the saw for the warm-up because they do hop around quite a lot on the ground. And yeah, there, is a, there are the pads there. Here we go. Don't blink, folks. Right, great start by Retschlag, who got in there a little bit faster than Chris Brown. Chris Brown, though, has really, really good pressure on. Retschlag moving back up there. And it's going to be Chris Brown with the faster cut. 
She caught up to Rechlag, who started faster, but Chris Brown just has that touch with those saws. And she really knows exactly how much pressure to apply. And it was a good downstroke, a good upstroke. And it looks like we've got thumbs up from both of our stage judges there as they check the cut lines. So we'll see what he says. So two thumbs up for these two women in the stocks on. Like I said, don't blick. It goes by fast. One of the fastest competitions. Chris, I'll just grab Chris for a quick while you pop the air. All right, here we go. Well, look at the slow mo. Now you can see Chris Brown on the far side. Renee Rechlag was faster getting into the block, but I think she just applied a little bit too much pressure on the way down, which slowed the blade or the chain down. And on the upstroke, she was really, really tentative about getting in there. She had a really thick first block. And they always say in these particular disciplines, thin to win. And that's exactly what Chris Brown had on the backside there. Look at how thin that first cookie is. Really, really precise, very straight cut. I bet you her handwriting is fantastic. And that second cookie as well, also nice and thin. If she did make a small mistake in there, she would have had a little bit of space to make a final third cut, but she did a great job there. And her time of 15.50 is a personal best and will be the time to beat for the moment. Renee Rechlag with a 17.37. Both of those are unofficial at the moment and both would be personal best for these women if they become, or when they become official, excuse me. Which means, I believe, we're good to go. Oh, there's a replay actually up on the big screen as well. Yeah, and we can see, so you uh, can see there, beautiful uh, location there Brown on the beach, here. just fantastic in just Australia just, 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 with an audience, up. a great thing to that. see, people back in a semblance of normality there, yeah. in this strange time that we're living through, so really nice to see that yeah, happening. Like we've got and it uh, looks like our next there, pairing so, uh, is ready to come on as we take a look at Amanda Beams there who is going to be uh, like disappointed with her performance. Or well, not with her performance, but the result the of the underhand chop. And we'll try and come back with a solid right stock now, size. We still wait for the official times for yeah, Rene Rechlag and Chris yeah, Brown. By a long way. PB's prior to this, Rene was 27 and Chris was 20. So they've taken a huge amount of time off their PBs. Outstanding. And we can uh, hear Dan right, and so Gaz in the background the talking about the personal best of, uh, Alrighty, of both of our first two, two uh, in the 20s. The and uh, and uh, that's, uh, like they said, a huge, a huge amount of time Amanda being Bates. taken off of their personal best. So Chris Brown and Renee Rechlag both getting personal best. Chris Brown with a 15.50 and Renee Rechlag with a 17.15 as Adele Deverell and Amanda yeah, Beams come up on really stage. Now, Amanda Beams had that fantastic cut in the underhand chop, which unfortunately cut into the foothold, which allowed Adele Deverell to hold on to that world record in the underhand chop. Beat Chrissy's time. Chrissy, you know, had a little bit of hesitation there at the start, so I think a perfect run might beat that. But uh, we'll have to wait well, a second. Maybe. Making some uh, last minute markings on her block to make sure she's just got everything lined up. That looks like it'll be a winning time. Amanda Beams getting everything positioned exactly right. Being in this sport since she was 16 years old, and as I said, a lifetime of experience, she knows exactly what she needs to do to excel here. So this is where it's going to count for Amanda Beams to try and regain some points and get into a final position. Sends to more timber. Three, two, one, go! Adele Devrell on stand. All right, Amanda Beams, look at how thin that first cookie is, starting off really well. But Adele Deverell, wow, look how quick she was to get through that first cut. The upstroke looking good for Adele Deverell as well. Amanda Beams is a little bit behind. And Adele Deverell with a personal best at 15.48. Unofficially, Amanda Beams, 18.08, not the day she wants to be having here at all. Thin to win, they say. So um, you want to as thin as you can get, and I think, I think that'll be okay. I'm, 
I look, looks like uh, Steve's putting it back together there. I think it's... Uh, so a quick check by our officials on stage. Everything needs to be checked so and double-checked to make sure that all the cuts are fair. Now, one of the officials does have a cookie in hand from Adele Deverell. Does that mean that there was an incomplete cookie? And they're both investigating it right now. So this is where it comes to be a bit of a nail-biter. There is an opportunity here for Amanda Beams to actually take that slower time and move into the second or third place position here would be but they have to double check the cookie here and that is a very thin cookie but it looked complete from my perspective it was just a break by the judge dropping it there and so we have to wait for the final call if both cuts are good and we'll find that out right now we'll have to wait and see let's find out here over to our judges to the official result Oh my goodness, a double DQ. That is unusual. And both of these women absolutely gutted, especially Amanda Beams having two DQs. And we're going to hear from Adele Deverell right now. Yeah, a little bit. Um, the, some of the bits might have broken off, so I'd be like looking at those tiny little bits when it came down to break off, but um, it's not to me at the end of the day. You, you, you join the Steel Timber Sports, having a bit of fun? Yeah, I love the Steel Timber Sports. It's a great event, and it's great to see so many people here today. Congratulations, well done, Luke. Better luck for the next round. So that's a bummer for both of these women, Adele Deverell and Amanda Beams, both disqualified in the stock saw for an incomplete cookie and cutting over the line. It looked really good for Adele Deverell here in the purple. Let's see if we can see something that maybe went awry as that saw comes out the bottom. That cookie looked okay for me. Coming back up through the top, it seemed like she had plenty of space. Amanda Beams on the backside struggling on that upstroke though and uh, I can't really see from this perspective if she and where she cut over the line. It looked like maybe she got there at the top and I think that's also where it happened for Adele Deverell. Ah, you could see. I thought that that uh, incomplete cookie was uh, part of the break at the fall when the judge let it fall down, but there's something else obviously there. So, yeah, too bad. And Amanda Beams not having the day that she wants to have with two disqualifications so far in two events. And this is what I said off the top of the show. It's really difficult with just three disciplines to stay in the competition if you're having trouble like that. All right, our next pairing, heat number three, between Katrina Head and Jody Boytel. And there, that's it, over on um, stand two with Amanda Beans, cutting across that line. Matt, you've got to get the two cookies inside that bar. Yeah, you've got 100, 100 millimetres of wood along the, the length of that log to, to cut two wheels, and they've got to be complete, two cookies. So there you can see the stock saw standings with Chris Brown at the top with a personal best of 15.50. Renee Retschlag in second place right behind her with also a personal best, best of 17.15. And our two DQs for Adele Deverell and Amanda Beams. And now coming up on stage in the lime green shirt is Katrina Head. And in the light purple is Jody Boytel. And there you can see the personal best for Jody Boytel, 13.78. So if she can pull off a 13.78 or better, she will move up into the top spot. But as you've seen, anything can happen in this competition. It's just small mistakes that make such a key difference in how the results come out. And as you heard off the hop, these saws are exactly the same saws that you can buy at your local steel dealership. The steel MS661CN. It's a fantastic tool, absolutely bulletproof. And there you see the difference in styles immediately between these two women. Katrina Head not opting for a test lift and Jody Boyle doing it straight away. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! All right, both of them getting into the block relatively at the same time. Jody Boyle a little bit quicker on that first downstroke. Cookie looks good 
coming up now. She got real close to that line. Katrina heads the faster though with a 15.45. That is a great time. And that could well be, yeah, it will be the top time of the day if it becomes official. Jody Boito with a 16.50. So she is a minute, or excuse me, a second off pace. So we'll see when the judge comes out in front if both cuts are good. All right, it looks like they're going to video review to check the start. Yeah, look, I was pretty happy with that. Um, I just really made sure of that cut. I didn't want to go too hasty and um, was just being careful, really. Fantastic. Now, Steve Lorenz is just, he's just like, I can feel him, his eyes piercing in the back of my head. So I might hand it back over to you and I'll give it to you for the official decision. Over to you, Steve Lorenz. Jody's cut was good. There you go, beautiful. So three points. All right. At least for Jody. So uh, that was a little bit of a nail biter there for Jody Boitel, who uh, they had to do a quick video review. And uh, and I did say that it looked really close to the line there. So we'll, uh, we, I mean, she got lucky. Let's put it that way with a good cut, uh, even though she did come close to the line. But watch Katrina head here. Both of them get into the block really dead on with each other. But Katrina just had that nice touch on the saw. Jody Boitel might be a little bit of adrenaline and then uh, play there, putting a bit too much pressure. Katrina had just the perfect amount of pressure on the upstroke, and she gets through that second cookie in a great time of 15.22, which uh, looks to me like it's been made official, and that is a personal best for Katrina Head. Jody Boitel with a 16.50. Not the time she wanted to have today, but at least her cuts were good. And here is, we're gonna take a look at that up. Uh, we don't get the full upstroke, but unfortunately we don't get to see that. However, she is in the mix in third place at the moment. All right, Katrina Head on the top so far after Stock Saw. Six points. Chris Brown sitting in second place with five points, and Jody Boitel in third place with four points. And we got a couple of personal bests out there as well as a world record from the underhand chop. Unfortunately for Amanda Devrell and Amanda, or excuse me, Adele Devrell and Amanda Beams, they both disqualified in the stock saw. And there's our crowd. Nice. All right, here we go. Now. So with here's the overall standings with the Katrin. Let me see that. Katarina head up on top with 10 points. Uh, Retschlag with eight in the second position and Beutzel holding bronze together with Brown with seven points at the moment. Uh, Deverell six points also looking good at uh, this stage, but Amanda Beams with zero points because of two DQs. Yeah. She's not going to be happy at all. Still, only from your local still dealer. Oh, wow. I really need one of those saws. <laughs> I just love the sound. But, uh, I mean, what's happening? In the second heat, we have personal bests. We have DQs. Things are going crazy and mad. And just like you said, if you only have three disciplines, I mean, this really hurts if you get a DQ. It's quick, fast, and a hurry. I mean, uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing how quick it happens. And, uh, and what you see there is the raining... Steel Timber Sports Australian champion is now currently sitting in sixth place with two disqualifications. Her chances of being on the podium are pretty much zero at this point. So that's a tough break for her. But, you know, it's anything can happen in this sport. And that's exactly what we're seeing here today. And it was always so close. I mean, she was doing a great job in both disciplines. Yeah. And, and it just, you know, 
it's those small things that you mentioned that just make the difference. And uh, it's literally millimeters, oh, cool. yeah, as yeah, we yeah, saw in the underhand shop yeah. and as as well in the socks off. I feel really sorry for her, but I'm very sure that she's going to show us uh, some more skills in the single bucket. Yes. If you want to know something about the single buck, well, watch what's coming up right now. We've got all the explanations you need. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc from a 40 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. It's so enjoyable to see the fans back, you know, just, just being able to watch a competition like we used to before a Corona. And uh, Australia is perfectly showing how it can work in St. Kilda. And, and uh, Troy, I mean, we're just loving this, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely enjoying it. It's nice to see some uh, some action again with uh, fans. It's such a huge part. I mean, the fans play such a huge role in how much... Uh, of a vibe that the event has and how much energy the athletes can give to the sport as well. So having Even them, we can feel it yeah, in the studio. Yeah, it's and crazy. I mean, it's we're just, so far away, but we can still feel it because there's still that vibe there for us as well, because you can, you can see it and you can, you can hear it in the headsets and everything. So yeah, it's, it's nice to have this back in action like this. And of course it's going to be nice to see this single buck. I've got the starting order for you right now. In the Ooh. first heat, we're going to see Adele Deverell take on Chris Brown. Followed by Katarina Head against Amanda Beams. And in heat number three, we'll see Rene Rechlag take on Jody Beutler. Ready to rock and roll, as always. Ready to rock and roll for sure. Now, interesting Chris Brown in this first heat. This is her favorite discipline. Will that play a role? Let's yes, find it out. Will. I'll tell you, it will. Yep. Um, I'm actually not really sure when the guys are to spray for the ladies in this one. I don't know if have a week or not. I don't think we do have a week in that early. It does take me cold. Good assistance, by the way. Good assistance. I think they're the husbands out there bringing the saws out for the, for the wives. So the saws get sprayed down, Matt, and there's a wedge as well it's, um, in previous competitions. Can you explain sort of how that helps? Uh, well, in previous years, you, you've had a, a second up there on the stage who sprays the saw for you. Just but, to lubricate it to help it through the wood? And, 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 and the wedge, but the, the, the wedge is not there anymore. It's just the spray before the, before the event. All righty, guys, it's time to bring the guys on stage for heat number one. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause. Adele DeVrell and Chris Brown for heat number one of the single buck. All right, so Adele DeVrell, who now holds the world record in underhand chop, going up against Chris Brown, who says that the single buck is her favorite discipline. So here, the single buck is all about flow and rhythm. You have to keep a good rhythm. You have to keep that saw moving. You have to make sure that you don't have too much of an angle on it. Otherwise, those raker teeth will hook up and then it'll stop the saw. Restarting this two meter long, five kilogram saw is expenditure of energy that you don't want to do. Now, the difference between, there's two different types of single buck competition. There is with assistance and without assistance. So what you'll so see you here see in this competition there. is that they'll be uh, having assistance of a sprayer up there. Sometimes you have wedger sprayer uh, where they put a wedge on top like you heard. 
Dan and Gaz mentioning earlier, but uh, in this case, I understand that there's only going to be spray happening, and the spray is basically just a lubricant to make sure that that saw slides through the wood as cleanly and as easily as possible. Now, they'll be setting the teeth into the saw and uh, using a special guide to make sure that the teeth aren't too deep, and then we'll finally get down to competition here between Adele Devrell and Chris Brown. Cut us a thinner disc, so it tastes to not, not cut too much. Just go easy. Mm. At the moment, Adele Javrel, with one disqualification and one win under her belt, is in fifth place. So this is a bit of an egregious position for a world record holder to be in. Uh, Chris Brown, meanwhile, is just above her in fourth place, having the second position in the underhand chop and fifth in stock saw. Uh, um, not fifth, excuse me. Two points in the underhand chop and five points in stock saw. So uh, sitting in a tied position with Jody Boytel for seven. Uh, for third place overall. So Adele Devrel can jump up in the standings here with a good time on that single buck, uh, assuming that everybody else struggles a little bit on this discipline. So let's see how this boils down between these two athletes on stage now. Here we go. Sands to your timber. Three, two, one. And we're up with the bar with this play. All right. And here you also see the different styles of sawing as well. Adele Jevrel going for those really long strokes that are slow and steady, but using the entire saw. Chris Brown, on the other hand, has a faster stroke pace, but, oh, she got caught up there. And that's exactly what I was talking about, making sure you try and keep that saw moving. you got to keep that saw moving. Now, there's no wedge, but you can see both the gentlemen on stage there with a little push of the thumb to try and make sure that that piece of that wood doesn't bind on the saw. And Chris Brown with a great single buck, 30.14 seconds. That's a personal best. And Adele Devrel with a 34.8, also a personal best. We'll wait for official times. So we'll just have to wait and see what the uh, official times will be made. Uh, but at the moment, unofficial times are 30.14 for Chris Brown, who wins this heat, board, and Adele Devrel with a 34.8. Over to our officials, after the handshake, the sportsmanship. So both cuts are good. That is a great thing, and we're going to hear from Chris Brown. Just concentrating on doing the best in each event, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. I've got the guy who makes the saws, so yeah, it's awesome. I was, was going to say, if you're not putting on a good time, yeah, it could be an awkward conversation in the household. Yeah, it might be a long trip home. <laughs> the, the, um, now, talk us through, obviously, the last part when, you, when you're really moving through there and you get like a slight hang-up. How, how, how do the lungs and, uh, and, the, and just the, the general stomach feel? Yeah, I've got a bit of a bad habit of holding my breath, and uh, so I have to really concentrate on my breathing and just, just remember all the factors that I've got to put in place. Oh, whatever you're doing is working. PB by 10 seconds. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause. I win it for this round. Chris Brown. Good on you, Chris. Great stuff. That would be an awkward ride home in the car. Do you think if your husband makes the sores, do you blame him or do you blame the saw or both? Well, I know what my... So here's a good opportunity for us to look at the different styles. Chris Brown starts with five or six really short, choppy strokes on the far side there with the red jersey on. And Adele just gets right into it, Adele Devrel, right into those really long strokes. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to both. If you start with those really long strokes, it takes a lot more time to get into the flow, but you're cutting with more of the teeth of the saw. Now, Chris Brown did eventually get into those long strokes, but she wasn't using the entire saw. And you could see there, the saw wasn't actually disappearing in behind that cookie, which is what you're going to see from the best cutters in the world doing this. Nevertheless, we eat that one hook up there. She still had a great time, a personal best of 29.92, which has been made official now. And Adele Devrel, her time was adjusted to 33.83, also a personal best. And we see Chris Brown's cookie drop. And that is some serious energy gutting work right there with that two meter long saw. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome up Katrina Head and Amanda Beams. All right, now we have Katrina Head and Amanda Beams. Amanda, 
Bit of a smile on her face there, and that's uh, good to see after two disappointing rounds in the underhand chop and the stock saw both DQs. At this point, for Amanda Beams, it's just about regaining some confidence and uh, putting her stamp on the single buck. Katrina Head in the green, Amanda Beams in the light gray. If you DQ in one event, you just can't get back, and then you've got to put pressure on yourself and try and gain it back, and then it just... She's, no she's, she's done what Richmond did last night, though, you know? The champion, and then you, you capitulate somehow. But it's good to see her with a smile on her face. Yeah, she's still smiling, and, and it's, it's, only, it's only a game for us. You know, we, it's only a sport, and uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much, but, it, and, and, but it's disappointing to, to have that. I happen. should note that Amanda Beams, who you're looking at well, right there, the was the previous so world record holder here, for the underhand the chop until the Adele Devrell took that away from her. And uh, as we saw in that first discipline in our women's competition today, she would have beat that by quite some time with a 36 and change, but unfortunately she cut into that foothold and that was her first DQ of the day. I don't want to hammer the point home, but what I'm trying to point out here is that Amanda Beams is one of the absolute strongest steel timber sports women in Australia, if not in the entire world. And uh, so that's a disappointing day for her today. And like I said, she's going to try and make a bit of a comeback here for her own headspace in this single buck. So Katrina Head going up against Amanda Beams. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. And they're off and soaring. All right. Yeah, Katrina Head, a little bit of a hookup there. Amanda Beams keeping that saw going. And she is using power and short strokes. Katrina Head as well, trying to get those short strokes to get that saw moving. And a little hook up there for Amanda Beams as well, but everything seems to be running just fine for her. It appears as though she's got a slight advantage over Katrina Head, but Katrina Head now making some headway. A little bit of a pun there as we get down to the bottom of that disc. And oh my goodness, another massive hookup for both of these women. But it's going to be Katrina Head with a 37.61 and Amanda Beams coming through in a 41.53. So it's a personal best unofficially now for Katrina Head with a 37.61, Amanda Beams with a 41.53. And if you can, you have to go back and cut it? Over to the, over to the judges for the official decision. All right, so that's good news yeah, for Amanda, Amanda Beams today. She's got herself a, uh, <laughs> an official time, uh, her only time of the day, and we got an interview with Katrina Head. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm worn out, <laughs> but good, really happy. What was, uh, what was GB saying to you there as you were going through? Just words of encouragement, or was he just screaming? No, no, he, he knew exactly what I needed to do to get that wheel off, and he... Um, yeah, it's just telling me to keep it flat and, and keep moving, and it was very positive and encouraging. Which is well, well the, the, so the time is good, so we'll obviously have to wait and see on the leaderboard. Congratulations on a fantastic day of competition. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to all the ladies, but particularly just right now to Katrina here. Well done. Uh, just before that interview, you saw uh, Amanda Beams getting a big, huge round of a support and applause from the audience there. Finally, getting some points today. So at the moment in single buck, Chris Brown at the top with Adele Devrell in second place. Katrina Head with a 37.37, now officially her personal best. And Amanda Beams with a 41.53. And let's take a look there. Amanda Beams with a good start. And again, on the far side there, you see that choppy short cuts. Same for Chris, or uh, excuse me, Katrina Head. But uh, she started to get those long strokes a little bit sooner 
then Amanda Beams did, and then Amanda Beams just a huge hookup right there mid stroke. Uh, two times, in fact, I didn't see that second one when we were live. And then at the bottom of the cuts, both of these women did hook up again and had to restart their saws. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a real battle to keep these massive two meter long cutting instruments moving through those blocks. But both of these women doing a fantastic job here. And uh, just that last stroke from Katrina Head was a difference maker, and she wins that head-to-head -head against Amanda Beams as we go to our next heat, getting ready to come on stage between Renee Retschlag and Jody Beutel. <laughs> All right, so we'll come up with the Jim and Jabra, and we'll get the athletes on stage and they can do their thing. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause for our final heat. It's oh, all right, here we go. Please give a round of so. applause. For Renee Richlag and Jody Beutel coming on stage now. There we can see our personal best for both of them. Jody Beutel with a slightly better personal best of 26 and change. So let's see if that is uh, to her advantage here or if Renee Richlag on the left hand side of your screen in the pink is going to. Uh, have used some uh, off-season training to get herself into a position to maybe win this one. She's the national record holder, by the way, in this discipline, so that could be a good so thing for her. What's, ha what's happening now is if Renee wins the single bar, she will become take, a champion. Yep. All right, last preparations here for this final heat in single buck. So I'll be watching Renee Retschlag here to give this her absolute all, because if she takes it out, if we've done the math right, she takes out the women's championship. If Renee cuts anything like her personal best of 31, she will win the day. All right, well, by the my math here, it uh, means well. that Renee Retschlag would win it, uh, but it's based on points here, as we see. Um, it would mean that she would be tied with Katrina Head. Of course, that math, uh, because I'm not a math guy, would have to be double-checked by the folks in Australia who definitely know a little bit more about the situation than I do. But right now, it's a battle between Renee Retschlag and Jody Boito. Down there it is. Time to be, ladies and gentlemen, to take our championship today. It's 33A3. And head over to the judges for our final heat of competition. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. And off and soaring. Time to be All right. on the screen. As we said, it's a Renee Retschlag who holds the Australian record for this discipline. Off and running with a good start. Jody Boito looking like she's using that entire saw, though. Both of them pretty evenly matched up at this point. It looks like Jody Boito has a slight advantage. No hookups on either one. So, oh, I spoke too soon. I might have jinxed her. Jody Boito hooks up big time. And Renee Retschlag also hooks up. And Jody Boito is going to get the time stopped. Or didn't actually stop, but she beat Renee Retschlag in this one. Um, times are unofficially looking like 27.37 for Jody Beutel and for Renee Retschlag a 28.75. Now that would be a personal best for her, but that's going to make things interesting for the overall standings here because Renee Retschlag sitting in second place. And as you heard Dan and Gaz mentioning earlier, if she wins this one, she would win the championship. But now up in the air so let's see who is going to take it down when the results come through officially here ah uh, yes hugs i remember those and handshakes that are like normal not fist bumps and elbow bops congratulations how are you feeling after that cup let me go on the side sorry yeah good <laughs> 
good. That was hard. I saw the men do it this morning. I went, oh, that's going to be hard, but good. Yeah. Have to really dig deep on, on obviously the lower, lower part of the cookie. Yeah, did a few stuff ups in the bottom, but um, anyway, that's life, I suppose. Well, it's an absolute pleasure having you in the competition, ladies and gentlemen. Give a, give a big round of applause and a big round of applause. Hold your applause for all the women competing here today. It's Jody Bytel. Makes all up. right, so. Jody Bytel with a 27:12. I've just gotten a little check mark on my timing screen. That means it's official. Waiting on the small check mark for Renee Retschlag. Uh, unofficially now 28:75, a personal best. And we're going to look back at the slow mo from this heat. Now watch the start of this heat. Both of them getting right into it. Jody Beutel going for those shorter cuts and Rene Retschlag right away into those long strokes, which takes more power, but you get a longer cut, a more efficient cut. But uh, And both of them look really good. And then there was only one major stall by both near the bottom of their stroke. And there was Jody's. And then uh, you could see the effort that's required to restart that saw. And then another huge block up. And then she finally gets through. And there you see official times for Jody Boyto, 27.12. And Renee Retschlag at 28.55. So Renee's is a personal best. And Jody Boyto's is good enough for top in the single buck. And if my math is correct, and if my scoring screen is correct, we do have a tie for the top spot in the overall ranking. But first, we're going to take a look at the results from the single buck discipline. And there you see Jody Beutel gets those six points. Renee Retschlag with the five points in second place. And Chris Brown with third place and four points in the single buck. And uh, let's see how that gets us to the overall standings. Our cameraman is uh, trying to figure out. So now let's see what our overall standings look like here. Okay, still no graphic coming here as we wait. My screen tells me Renee Retschlag in first place, Jody Beutel in second, and Katrina Head in third, but we have to wait. Ah, here we go. Overall standing. So, yeah, there we go. We, we do have a tie in points in the top two positions, but they do have Renee Retschlag in the number one spot with Jody Beutel in second place and Katrina Head in third. And that means those are the top three on our podium today. Fantastic com competition for our women. Three athletes that are going to be whatever we're going to bring up on stage just to build the suspense that you like to do. So we'll get the, uh, the top three ladies to the side of the stage. A big round of applause for all of our competitors today. Outstanding athleticism. I mean, it looks easy. Girls are machines. It is unbelievable. And, uh, well, Rainer Rich, like Jody Beutel, they're in the top spots uh, in the single buck heat. And, of course, it's all down to time. If you're tied with the points, the fastest overall time wins. And uh, that is the one and only Rene Retschlag taking the Australian Championship. Congratulations from my house side, lifting my hat. I mean, That's off. <laughs> oh, wow. What, what a competition. I mean, yeah. it had everything. Yeah, I mean, there was only six seconds difference in the overall time between these two women. So that says a lot about their skill levels. Uh, if I look at the timing screen here, it's a 133.67 for Renee and a 139.36 for Jody. So very, 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 very close times between those two. But big congratulations, the new 2021 Steel Timber Sports Australian Women's Champion is Renee Retschlag. So, I mean, fantastic competi competition so far. Oh, no doubt about that. Even uh, Jody Boyce, I mean, just, you know, getting those cheers and that applause because she didn't get a DQ in that last competition. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that was so, so nice. And, and she yeah. was in great shape. I mean, she always uh, almost got her own world record just by millimeters missing out on that. She, she was in great, in great shape and ended up sixth. So, uh, 
you can see how close this is. And, and we're ready yep. for the prize giving ceremony. So let's go back to St. Kilda and uh, let's cheer on these three lovely ladies getting in bronze, silver and gold. And of course, all six athletes, they did a great job. So absolutely, absolutely. Let's go back to St. Kilda. Here they are. Guys, it is that close. These results, we've had to go back and count back on time to declare it an overall winner. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, in the third place, please give a big round of applause for Katrina Head. <laughs> All righty, ladies and gentlemen, in second place, an even bigger round of applause, please, for Jody Butel. Uh, guys, we can show a little bit behind the curtain here. Jody wound up with 13 points, and our overall winner has also wound up on 13 points, hence the count back on time. All the times have been added together, and the time has been eclipsed by six seconds. Jody's time has been beaten by who, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, can you please be upstanding and give a big round of applause for our 2021 Australian Women's Champion, Renee Retschley! <laughs> Welcome to the stage, please. Joe Katsos from Steel Timber Sports to present the medals to our first, second, and third first position. In Give a big round of applause one more time, please, guys. A few tears up on stage. You love to see it. All the hard work and the passion and the effort and the early starts paid off. And also, well done to our other three competitors, of course, Adele DeVrell, Amanda Beams, and Chris Brown. Ha <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Taking a bite out of time, literally. All it's, right, well, uh, well, those are the three fastest time, women of the day. Unfortunate day for Amanda Beams, two Ooh, disqualifations. Just Finally just got some points with the uh, single buck, right. but uh, unfortunately it wasn't quite enough. And we're going to get an interview from our winner, Renee Rexley. It's, uh, it's, it's a very exciting day of competition, and you've done it. How do you feel? I feel awesome. I've been chasing this since the first one back in 2017. I've come close a couple of times. I had a pretty... Not great right here, 2019 with it. I was happy with my position, so I, I've been really training and different mindset, and it's amazing to get first today. Well, the hard work, you had a very, very consistent day, and that's what the Timber Sports is all about, having that consistency, getting the times on the board. You did that all day. Uh, and and how, how, in terms of, like, the best competitions, like, like where did you feel like you, you really excelled today? <laughs> I would usually say my chop, but that was actually pretty terrible for me today. Um, single buck, I've had to work really hard on that. I've got a love-hate relationship, so I was actually quite happy with it. Little jag in the bottom, that's all right, I've got to take it, so... Australian, uh, the Australian uh, champion. How does that sound? It sounds amazing. <laughs> Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. One more time, our 2021 Steel Timber Sports champion. There you go. Renee Richlake's taking it out. She's talking down yeah. her underhand shot. Yeah. She actually plays second in the underhand shot. Rene Rechler claiming that title by six seconds and she was absolutely on fire and really, really happy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would be happy as well. You know, the 2021 Australian champion, after all of the things that everybody around the world's gone through this season, you have to be proud of the results there. And uh, it's just, uh, just incredible what they've done down there. So good job, everybody in Australia. Fantastic. And uh, it was really fun to see that action today. It was absolutely fantastic. And, and I think it's time for the highlights of the day because we will be back soon for our main event, the Australian Trophy 2021. So ladies and gentlemen, dear Steel Timber Sports fans, stay tuned. Here are the highlights of the Australian Championship and the women champion. Here we go. So while we're waiting, guys, just want to give a pick card. Make sure you guys grab some food from all our incredible food vendors. Make sure you check out the merchandise stand. And, of course, grab a drink from our Steel Timber Sports bar there as well. Uh, we're going to be obviously playing tunes. We've got the men's final coming up. Very, very exciting. We've got the best of the world here. Matt, I'm excited. It's going to be very, very close.
Hello world and welcome back to St. Kilda in Australia for the first Steel Timber Sports official live stream of the season. We have just seen an amazing women's competition take place and now we are getting ready for the Australian Trophy 2021. And as always, by my side, the one and only Troy Mannering. Aloha, my friend. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. I'm happy to be back in the mix. You know, we got a live show, actual live, not re-live, not, you know, virtual or anything like that. There's people there. There's actually people... You, Life, yes. Yeah, there's, there's people watching uh, in Kilda in Australia. There's audience. It's awesome. And uh, we just saw, like uh, Marcus said, a great competition for the women. And now we're going to get into what I think is the best format in timber sports, just my personal opinion, the trophy format at the 2021 Australian Trophy for Steel Timber Sports. It's going to be exciting. Well, if you say it's the best format, uh, let's take a closer look at it. Here he comes. Yes. The Steel Timber Sports Australian Trophy. At the Australian Trophy, athletes have to complete four disciplines back to back. From the start, they need to cut a whole disc with the stock saw within a marked 10 centimeter area. After that, they have to complete the underhand chop as fast as possible. Only after they split the block can they return to the starting point, where this time the single buck is waiting for them to cut one complete cookie. As the last discipline, they have to complete the standing block chop in order to achieve the best possible overall time. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will be eliminated. The competition format demands the utmost concentration, endurance and precision. And they have to plan their efforts strategically over the course of the rounds as all participants must first demonstrate their skills in the time trial. The four fastest athletes go straight through to the quarterfinals while the two slowest contestants get eliminated. The remaining athletes battle it out in the last chance round in knockout duels for the remaining quarterfinal spots. Thereafter, the athletes continue to compete in the knockout system in quarterfinals and semifinals. The losers of the semifinals will fight for the last podium place in the so-called small final. After that, the two winners of the semifinals will compete one more time to see who will come out at the very top as the winner of the Australian trophy. today guys because no one does it better in Australia and I'm saying that knowing that there are people around the world watching right now they compete against each other and the clock across heart racing disciplines based on traditional logging skills of course now we had dead as St. Kilda, how nice is that? See all that waving, all those flags, really enjoying that. We had the time trials, you missed out on that. We had 14 athletes, uh, two dropped out and four fastest moved directly into the quarterfinals. And yeah, no, sh no shocker there. Braden Meyer was among the four fastest with Lawrence O'Toole, two of the top guys in Steel Timber Sports at the moment. Mitch Argent, uh, excuse me, uh, no, Braden Meyer, Mitch Argent, Cody Steers, and Brody Dingle were the top four guys. Who just missed out. Lawrence O'Toole was just in fifth place in the time trials, but you know what? Uh, for him, it doesn't matter because he's so strong and uh, he'll come back from that for sure, for sure. Uh, and of course, we, we want to take a closer look at all the athletes that are competing yes. and... Um, I hope that we can see him on stage in St. Kilda in a very few moments. And of course, we have uh, some of these athletes. We might be a little more, uh, you know, respectively in charge of taking the title this year. Who do you think are Ooh. the favorites? I mean, like uh, in Australia, there are one, two, three, maybe four, five, six athletes. That could I'm, make it. I'm just looking at my list here. Um, you know, Brad DeLosa is a legend. Uh, it's potential that he could be right up there. He is in the middle of the field at the moment in sixth place. Uh, Brody Dingle has been good. We're going to take a look at each of these individual guys. Blake Meyer, for instance, uh, he's making his second appearance in the national uh, or the Australian trophy. And uh, he's going from strength to strength. Um, 
Next up is uh, going to be Chris Owen. We'll see him just shortly, but you can see some of his information up there for Blake Meyer. And, of course, the Instagram uh, information is there. That's um, very bold. Instagram, Instagram. Absolutely. Right. These <laughs> days, you know. Uh, Chris Owen, he's been an up-and-comer in Steel Timber Sports as of late. And uh, we'll be looking to to push to the next rounds and really make a, a name for himself. Uh, David Rumor up next. And uh, we saw last year in the virtual Australian Championships how he was really, really strong. Um, he was a 2019 Australian Rookie Champion and it's his second year now in the pro division. Danny Gurr, he's your 2018 rookie world champion. And now he is joined up in the pro league. Uh, you can keep a close eye on him. He's a slight guy, but boy, can he swing an axe. <laughs> I know he can, yes. Now we, we've seen uh, in the time trials, the Dingle brother, brothers really working hard. Uh, Jake Dingle is going to be our next athlete you see up here. He's back for his third Australian Trophy appearance, and he's going to be looking to better his quarterfinal appearance from 2019. He's a big, strong hitter. As you see in 2019, he got 10th place in the Australian Trophy. Then we got Josh Bakes up next. He was the 2018 Australian Rookie champion and uh or definitely a man he watch. yeah he was the yeah. he won that championship no that. and took the silver at the rookie world championship so he's definitely a man to keep an eye on and uh you know you're going to keep an eye on all of these guys of course because anything can happen in these sports but uh, it's all over the map uh, depending on the talent and we've got a lot of talent in australia okay up next we've got brody dingle this is his australian trophy debut but he's been a consistent top performer since the series started back in 2015. So the Dingle Boy is definitely in the mix here. Then we have Jamie Head. Now, Jamie Head's been around this game for a long time. He has three Team World Championship golds under his belt, winning in 2018. And he is the fastest man in the East on the stock saw. He's also the fastest man on the motorbike, by the way. I've heard. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. That's what they say, at least. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Cody Steers. Last year, an injury really affected his preparation but he is back to full fitness and looking to better his two silver medals in the trophy where he placed second in 2017 and like 2019. He, he has too as well. He's gotten a lot slighter and it uh, looks like he's got a better haircut than last season as well. You <laughs> can't see the haircut on me. Yeah, I know. It's probably better that way too. <laughs> All right, Glenn Gillum, the man with the biggest ax in the world. And uh, he is also a two-time team world, two -time team world championship uh, he has those in his trophy cabinet, so that's fantastic as well. And I really hope we get to see his massive axe for the standing block chop in this competition because it is a beast. And of course, we've got the top contenders coming up now. Four names uh, everybody knows in the business. Absolutely everybody knows. And in fact, the first guy we're going to look at here, Brad DeLosa, is a living legend. You know, he's won three world trophy titles. He's the individual world champion in 2017, and he's won six team world titles with the Chopperoos crew. So there is no slouch for him at all. He was unfortunately eliminated early on in the Australian virtual championship last year. Um, but let's throw that one out the window because that doesn't count for us really. All right. Can't remember. Can't remember. That. Yeah, I can't remember. What? What happened last year? All right. So we have Mitch Argent here next. He's the three-time gold-winning Chopperoo and two-time Australian trophy holder. And uh, in 2017 and 18, he won it. So uh, can he do it again? We'll find out. And then, of course, the man with the fastest axe in the world. I think they actually measured the speed that his axe head travels at. And he is about two to three kilometers faster than everybody else. Anyway, he is the reigning individual world champion, five-time team world champion, and he was your runner-up last year at the trophy. And then our He's last guy. Five. I know, it's unbelievable. <laughs> hey, He is What's just a machine. Absolutely a machine. You'll see what I'm talking about with his axe. But everybody else seems to be playing catch-up or at least getting close to his axe speed. It's absolutely amazing. 
And then we have from Victoria, Lawrence O'Toole. And I mean, his family is all about wood chopping. They're legendary in this sport. He's the 2018 individual world champion, six-time team gold medal winning champion with the Chopperoos. And he's undisputed two-time champion at the Australian Trophy. So uh, that is quite the list. What a lineup. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. And I, I have to ask the question again, Troy. Who do you think is your favorite for today? Last time you told me in Australia, you can like throw up a coin into the air, kick it, and uh, it will hurt someone who can... Absolutely. And I hold, I hold true to that <laughs> statement. It's anybody's game. As we saw with the women, the absolute best female athlete there ended up in sixth place. Crazy. And we saw uh, with the same thing, Brad DeLosa uh, at last year's Australian virtual championship, he got eliminated quite early. So, I mean, it's really anybody's guess. But I'm going to say Mitch Argent's going to have a good day today. <laughs> so let's take a look at the start list of the last chance qualifier that's coming up right now. So uh, in the heat, number one, we'll see Glenn Gillum take on Jake Dingle. In Heat 2, it will be Lawrence O'Toole taking on Daniel Gurr. And in Heat 3, Chris Owen versus Josh Bakes. And in Heat number 4, Brad DeLosa will take on Blake Meyer. So that is a lot to look forward to. And we're lucky to be able to go live to St. Kilda again. St. Kilda, can you hear us? St. Kilda, can you see us? Hopefully we can see... Oh, there they are. <laughs> We started with 14 athletes. All right, you can see that stage looks a little bit different now. You've got the underhand chop, the standing block chop, and your big block back there for the single buck and the stocks on out. What you saw with the format earlier where each of these two athletes on stage have to go through all four of these disciplines as fast as possible. And this is what makes this so absolutely enticing and exciting to watch because it's non-stop action on stage. The All right, so there's Glenn Gillum. I'm looking forward to seeing if he's got that big axe with him. And uh, there is Jake Dingle right next to him. And uh, I mean, Jake Dingle, you wouldn't believe it to look at him, but he swings an axe with so much power, it's insane. It's interesting, too, to note that uh, it's much like a, a hockey slap shot or throwing a baseball or a football. It's not all just from the arms and the upper body. You have to activate the leg and the hips and the torso and really just get the whole body swinging through those axe hits. So that's something that he does really, really well. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for our Heat 1 competitors, Mr. Gillum and Mr. Dingle. So Glenn Gillum and Jake Dingle. And Jake Dingle on stand number two. Glenn Gillum not having a... Uh, the best time out there, but I uh, didn't get a chance to see that axe that he just plopped into uh, the standing block there. I don't think that's his big axe, though, to be honest with you. It looks like that is the normal polished axe, and uh, these guys will get everything ready on stage. And again, it's just so exciting to watch this format. The, the, the trophy format is so much fun. As a commentator, the trophy format is exciting as well because there's a ton of stuff going on on stage at the same time. It's all happening so quickly and trying to keep up with it, it just gets the adrenaline flowing here for us as well. And the fact that there's a live audience there giving these guys all that support is, uh, is also so fantastic. Using those muscles in a different direction. That's when it starts to hurt. And then, of course, when you finish the single and come to the standing... Glenn Gillum really absolutely focused. He's just holding on to that saw, waiting to start it up. He's really focused. In here, this particular format, it's all about the stamina and being able to keep that stamina and keep that accuracy on all these things. Here we go. Oh, great start by Glenn Gillum. Fantastic. He got up there so fast. There you see Dingle 
keeping that saw going clean, but both of them moving over quickly to the underhand chop. A little toe drop there for Glenn Gillum as he gets that axe moving. And keep an eye on how quickly he moves that axe. Now, not near as quick as Braden Meyer at the point right now, but uh, both of these guys moved over to the backside of their logs very quickly. And let's see who's going to break through first. Oh, it's going to be Jake Dingle get, getting through there first. So he'll move over to that single buck. But this is a discipline where Glenn Gillum is quite strong. Now, here's another one where we're talking about using the hips and the legs, pushing off that back leg, rotating your hips through the stroke. And then, oh, no, huge hookup by Jake Dingle there as that saw stopped for a good count of two seconds anyway. And that's going to cause a big problem for him as they pass the one minute mark now and Jake Dingle finally gets that block off. Did it cut through completely? He needs to double check that and just a ton of time wasted now as Glenn Gillum gets to a discipline where he is absolutely dominant. That standing block doesn't stand a chance against Glenn Gillum and like I said before it doesn't look like he's using his big axe or is he? No it doesn't look like it but Glenn Gillum drops it in a time of 124.73 and uh, unfortunately for Jake Dingle he just had a small problem on that single buck where the saw got caught and it was a good long time before he got it restarted and then as it hit the bottom he wasn't sure if he had a clean cut through and he took a lot of time to look back and see. And I, I'm, I hope we get to see that in the replay. We'll find out. But that was a good heat from Glenn Gillum. All right, it's official. Both cuts are good for both stands. And we're going to hear from... Jake Dingle. Just couldn't quite get that last bit off. Yeah, as the disc dropped, um, it was just holding by a little bit of sap right on the bottom, and I hadn't cut it right through, so if I went onto the standing block, I would have got DQ'd anyway, so I thought I'd just finish it and then cut the standing block strong at the end, but yeah, a bit unfortunate. Mate, mate the, uh, watching it earlier, quite consistent, looks like you're just improving, obviously getting better every time you come up onto the stage. Yeah, I think the more I can get a few runs at it, the better I'll go, but... Yeah, I do enjoy this event, so hopefully I'll get better at it. Mate, congratulations. Absolute pleasure to have you part of it. Give a big round of applause, please, Jake Dingle. All right, here he is. It's, all, it's, all, it's always, let me come around this side. It's always fun having an interview after you've just uh, run around there. You must hate seeing the microphone, but mate, it's great to have you back. Ah, uh, diddly, yeah. It's great to be back. The, um, now, now, talk me through it. How would you go there during the lockdown and the off-season, mate? Doing heaps of chopping, just, just going on for big marathon runs, the usual? Oh, yeah, mate. I was just stretching out, long walks on the beach, just living the life. Mate, now talk me through there. You look, you look quite, quite solid, uh, nice and consistent there. H how's the wood today? The wood's terrific. It's just uh, the fittest of the fittest, and hey, we're here. We're having fun. Mate, really good to see you. Pleasure. Good luck for the rest of the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Gillum, everybody. Glenn Gillum, one of the absolute characters of the sport, hailing from right here in Victoria. I think he actually said diddly. <laughs> All righty, let's take a look back at the slow-mo. And uh, wow, what a quick start by Glenn Gillum on that stock saw. And you can check the angle of the saw. This is a strategic angle for him. Uh, you, you see a lot of the guys cutting with parallel with that saw blade moving down through the block. But he has quite an angle and he just keeps the pressure nice and even through there. Now on the underhand chop, it was Jake Dingle who actually got through there faster than Glenn Gillum did. But Glenn Gillum on this single buck is so strong. And you can see uh, there is that huge hookup by Jake Dingle. That was a good two seconds, and that was a killer for him. And then at the bottom of the cut, we got through there to the bottom, and like he said in his interview, there was just a little piece of sap or a thread or something that was holding that cookie on. And had he moved over to the standing block chop before that was on the deck, it would have been a problem for him. And then you can't let Glenn Gillum get to the standing block chop with that much of a lead, there is just no chance because he's so strong in that discipline. It's one of his favorites, and that's why he is one of the best at it. And, uh, you know, it's that never give up attitude of these athletes that just shows everything. So uh, Jake Dingle gets an official time of 138.89 and Glenn Gillum official time of 124.41. And look at that. 
In all that chatter, the crew has already got a new stage ready for our next heat, which is going to be Lawrence O'Toole and Danny Gurr. Tough job for Danny Gurr. If we uh, if we take a look back here, Danny Gurr, the 2018 Rookie World Champion, and uh, trying to break into the big leagues here, and he's going up against one of the absolute masters in Lawrence O'Toole. As you heard, Lawrence O'Toole, the 2018 Individual World Champion and six-time Team World Champion with the Chopperoos. And that's something that a lot of Australian wood choppers aspire to be able to be part of is that chopperoo team as they come up on stage. And uh, there you go. You can see the time difference between their personal bests in this discipline set up 125.79 to 102.87. So Daniel Gurr has his work cut out for him. And it comes down to vim and vigor of the youth or the experience and knowledge base of the master. And you can see Lawrence O'Toole still as fit as ever. Should mention our uh, judges on stage, Neil Richardson, Richardson and Steve Lorenz. And uh, the guy that you don't see a lot of the time, our video judge from England, Scott Bennett. And uh, the official competition control center head is Simon Holmes. So those four gentlemen are responsible for making sure that everything that's happening on stage is fair for all the athletes participating in the event here today in Australia. Uh, look at that backdrop that you can see through that flag setup they've got there on the back of the stage. What a beautiful area they're in in St. Kilda. Australia's got it going on today as they have 15 seconds to warm up their saws and get busy with the first cuts in heat number two of this last chance qualifier. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Ooh, Daniel Gurr with a good start on that stock saw. Lawrence O'Toole has a good flow, though. Let's see if he can get through there before Daniel. No, they're even. Even Steven and Daniel Gurr with a quick step up to that underhand chop. Lawrence O'Toole may be a stroke behind, but he catches up with some quick hits on the block on the first side. Daniel Gurr switching over to the other side now. You can see the height difference between these two guys, which means that Lawrence O'Toole has an opportunity to put a lot more pressure into that hit. And look at that! They're both through those blocks, almost dead even, heading to the single buck. Let's see if Daniel Gurr can keep up with Lawrence O'Toole, those big long legs and that stretch. And look at how much of the saw Lawrence O'Toole is using. He is cutting with that entire saw, but Daniel Gurr right there with him, cutting perfectly. This is gonna look like a good time for both of these guys as they're looking really solid and fast, but O'Toole is through onto the standing block chop. Daniel Gurr now struggling to get those final strokes and here is where that fitness level plays a huge role and with O'Toole so far in he leisurely strolls around to the back side of that block like yep this is my heat and I don't care what you say Daniel I'm taking it from you Daniel Gurr not giving up but Lawrence O'Toole with the final drive and that is a time of 1 at 23 22 and Daniel Gurr Three or four more drivers should do it. Let's see here. Okay, let's call it five. 132.40, an unofficial time at this point. But Lawrence O'Toole, what a great single buck for him to take the lead after Daniel Gurr stuck with him through that stock saw and underhand chop. That heat was really exciting for those two first disciplines. And then O'Toole using that height and that long stroke on the single buck just took over from there. Keeping up with uh, Lawrence like the whole way through there. That single buck's tough when you, obviously you've got a guy that's you know six foot a zillion going through. But yeah, you, you did really well. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way I cut the underhand. Um, so same in the qualifier. I went pretty good. 
But yeah, when I get to that single buck, it's quite difficult. Um, yeah, I don't have the weight to shift the saw, so it takes a lot of a lot of energy to shift it. And um, yeah, and then I'm pretty pretty done for energy in the standard block. So yeah, it makes start. Mate, oh, fantastic effort. Um, we really enjoy watching it. We can't wait to see the future and what it holds for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Gurr. Would have chatted to Lawrence O'Toole, but he's gone AWOL, so we'll come back to him. He's meditating backstage, yes? Lawrence O'Toole knew that interview was coming and ran away. <laughs> All right, but Lawrence O'Toole with a great effort there in that last chance qualifier, and that means that he should move up into the top spot so far, just ahead of Glenn Gillum, who has a time of 124.41, as we take a look back at the slow-mo, and really, I mean, this heat was dead even. Those cookies couldn't have dropped any more even with each other on the stock saw. You can see they're both right on top of it. Actually, Daniel Gers went down just a hair ahead, of Lawrence O'Toole's, but O'Toole and Gurr were both pretty even on the underhand chop. We should see the split here any second now. There is Gurr's and then O'Toole's, and they both made it to the single buck, and here is the difference maker, O'Toole, with those long legs that go all the way to his ears, just using them every stroke, and then the final hit, just casually lopping the top off of that block for the win in this heat. All right, and again, our fantastic teams at each of the events at the Steel Timber Sports doing an amazing job making sure that stage is ready to go in a matter of seconds. It's almost like pit stops for F1 or Indy 500. I guess that would be the, the, the closest uh, comparison, I would say, but the guys do a great job, and we always have to give them kudos because... It is a crew of people that come out to make sure that that deck is safe for the athletes. And uh, that is what it's about, too, safety and cleanliness. As uh, we did see a couple of guys go down in past, stepping on some sawdust, stepping on some remnants of the blocks that get cut away as they come around on the standing block chop. And that's uh, with an axe that that's sharp in your hands. You don't want that to happen all too often, if ever. Our next heat, though, in the last chance qualifier, heat number three between Chris, Chris Owen and Josh Bakes. All righty, just getting the stage ready to rock and roll, and then we're going to fire up this heat number three down at Matt. Very, very exciting stuff. All right. All right, and ladies talking and gentlemen, about let's give falling. a big round of applause for our competitors. Is that, is that a snap in? Trying to get there right, quickly and uh, taking the tumble on front. Uh, he's okay, though, up and Please, off the stage. And, and we're going to meet now Chris Wales, Owen and Chris Josh Owen. Bakes. And from Sheffield, Tasmania, Joshy Bakes. So their personal bests aren't too far off. Seven Slippery seconds separate them. Uh, Chris Owen with the better of the two personal best. Josh Bakes, or as... Uh, one of the guys, Gaz or Dan, I don't know which one, called him Joshy Bakes. I'm sure he loves that. Joshy. Joshy Bakes a Cake. And there we see Chris Owen, rugged as always, getting ready with his single buck. Only four guys will make it from the last chance qualifier into the quarterfinal to join the other guys in the quarterfinal. Braden Meyer already in there. Glenn Gillum looks like he's been placed already, but still depends on uh, timing here. Brody Dingle, Lawrence O'Toole looks to be in place. Mitch Archon and Cody Steers. I think Mitch Archon's going to have a good season this year, and uh, I really hope uh, he does well today. I, I I have to hope that because I said I thought he'd win. Okay, we 
we got a uh, small issue here. Not sure what's going on. Bit of a start, starting cadence failure there. <coughs> That's what's ready. Ah, they have to restart to make sure that everything is fair. That's got to be a head wrecker for these guys as they were ready to go and everything got stopped and reset. Okay, here we go. Chris Owens, Josh Bakes both getting in there straight away with the stock saw. I'm going to say Chris Owens got a slight advantage here, but we go to that single camera, and yeah, Chris Owen moves over to the underhand chop just ahead of Josh Bakes. And now watch the quickness of these axes. As we get farther into the competition, you'll see these axes on the underhand chop just whipping through the air. Chris Owen looking good. Josh Bakes, as we take a look at a close-up of his log, huge slabs coming out of those first couple of hits on the backside of his. Josh Bakes is doing well. Chris Owen, who will get through first? It's going to be, oh, Bakes has a big problem there as he's gotten a big slab that came off the side of the foot. Hold, and now he is at a bit of a disadvantage as Chris Owen has moved over to that single buck with a good solid lead and he's got a good flow going now. It's just about whether or not Chris Owen can, ca or uh, Josh Bakes, excuse me, can catch up to Chris Owen. A bit of a hook up there for Chris Owen, but no problems as he gets down to the bottom of that block. Josh Bakes had a hook up as well and Chris Owen with a huge advantage now as he moves over to the standing block chop. Not wasting any time getting into that one. He wants to get a nice deep cut first side and then get over to the other side. He didn't uh, go around the leisurely way that Lawrence O'Toole did, but uh, he didn't race around either, just making sure his footing was absolutely correct. And you could see him slabbing out nicely. It should be one more drive for Chris Owen, and that's going to do it in a time of 129.35. He'll win this heat, and Josh Bakes still trying to get through the backside of his standing block chop as the time gets past the 140 mark and he'll do it in 142 44 these are of course unofficial times until our timing and judges say otherwise good so those times can be officialized all right we have a chat to both the boys there all right, so Chris Owen is going to be moving on to the quarterfinals. It is the winner of each of these heats. So Glenn Gillum, Lawrence O'Toole, and Chris Owen, the usual suspects, I would say, moving on. My store actually came out of the starter cut, so I had to, to start it on the run and cut a full cut. So uh, that threw me off, and, yeah, it sort of just crumbled from there. Oh, man, you've done fantastic. You're very young in the sport. We very much look forward to seeing you in future years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Bakes. Yeah, guys, I've just got Chris Owen here. How you feeling, brother? You look uh, like you gave it your all there. Yeah, mate, it's one of those things. Even if you get a bit of a lead, you can't let off because anything can happen. What do you expect to happen for the rest of the day? You feeling confident? Yeah, I'm going to have to put up a big performance in the next round. It gets harder and harder. That's the way, Chris. We know you can do it. Big round of applause for both our athletes. As Chris Owen makes his way off the stage. We're getting ever closer to finding out. Ah, uh, yes. There is one of our crew falling onto stage. Those are one of those terrible situations where you don't want to be in, but uh, it's, uh, it's okay. He didn't hurt himself. So... Calling Chris Owen an up-and-comer in the sport is a bit of an understatement as he has been rocking and rolling the last couple of seasons. Bad luck for Josh Bakes as he mentioned that uh, he had the problem with having to reset that single buck, but you can see on these first two disciplines, the stock saw and the underhand chop, both these guys were really pretty even. Chris Owen was out of the stock saw a bit faster than Josh Bakes was, but here Josh Bakes had this big problem where the block, that was like, I mean, that's a massive slab coming off, and they got no footing to try and make those couple of last blows, and then here, Chris Owen is just way too far ahead. Little hook up there, didn't really bother him all that much, used his upper body strength to restart that saw, didn't lose a lot of the momentum there, and you could see Josh Bakes had a couple of hookups in there as well. It happens, you know, but that's the learning process, and I mean, Josh Bakes is the 2018 Australian Rookie Champion, so um, 
you know, he's he's definitely an up-and-comer as well. Took silver at the Rookie World Championship that same year as well. And here, Chris Owen does massive hits, and uh, Josh Bakes also doing great. And look, at, you have to have the stamina to be able to just aim that axe properly and get those proper hits. If it's the wrong angle, it'll stick in If it's uh, or it'll glance off. So there's all sorts of things that can happen there, and those guys both did a fantastic job on stage. All right, so our last chance qualifier heat number four coming up. Brad DeLosa against Blake Meyer. Blake Meyer's second appearance, as you heard in the introductions, in the trophy, in the Australian trophy. And uh, Brad DeLosa is a legend in the sport. There is no one in Australia that doesn't know Brad DeLosa's name if there are fans of Steel Timber Sports. That's it, Matt. Then we go to the quarterfinal and then the semi. And the big one. So one more heat to go here in the last chance qualifier. And then we'll move on to the quarterfinals, semifinals, and the finals, as you heard the guys on the location there just in tone. All right, Blake Meyer and Brad DeLosa, world record holder in this discipline, Brad DeLosa, by the way, or in, in, the, in the trophy format. He had a great Steel Timber Sports Champions Trophy contest in the final against Canadian Sterling Hart in Hamburg. That was an exciting battle. Absolutely incredible how that heat went down. It was to the wire. Blake Meyer setting up his single buck. Can't forget, this is a two meter long saw. It's got cutting teeth and sweeping teeth. And obviously, you know, that should uh, be pretty self-explanatory. The cutting teeth make the cuts and the sweepers pull any of that junk that, that's been cut through those cutting teeth out of the space. And it's the sweeper teeth that tend to get caught up more. You'll also see in this format that this is a single buck without help because of the way that this format works. So these guys have to manage through on their own. All right, so obviously the favorite here to get into the quarterfinal would be Brad DeLosa as the world record holder in this particular setup. But like I said, anything can happen. Here we go. Good even start for both of these guys. Brad's got a pretty thin cut. Meyer on the backside, Blake Meyer. Not to be mistaken with Braden Meyer, Brad DeLosa shuts down his saw, shuffles it off to the side, and heads over to the underhand chop. Blake Meyer, good quick axe on the far side there. Let's see how this turns out. This could be an interesting situation for Brad DeLosa as he's going up against the young guy with, uh, seems like, plenty of skills. Big hookup, though, for Blake Meyer, and DeLosa gets through his block, not wasting any time to get over to a discipline where he is very strong, and that is the single buck. We've seen plenty of competitions come down to this particular discipline here, and uh, he is very good at it, but Blake Meyer taking a page from Brad DeLosa's book as well with those nice long strokes. Oh, but he gets a big hook up and bows that saw big time. DeLosa gets a massive hook at the bottom and gives an opportunity to Blake Meyer. He doesn't take it. And now DeLosa moves over to the standing block chop. And remember, this is to get into the quarterfinal. And at this point, Brad DeLosa with the advantage as Blake Meyer had a huge problem taking a ton of time to make the final cookie drop there on that single buck. And DeLosa working on the backside of his log now already. It should be, I'm not going to call it an easy win for DeLosa. And Brad, or Blake Meyer, excuse me, moves over. And Brad DeLosa does it in 128.27. Blake Meyer doing a great job to try and catch up to DeLosa. And he could have done it had he been a little bit faster with that single buck. But he had a massive hookup. Had to lift the saw, drag it back, and restart everything. And that costs a ton of time. 
Wow. Brad DeLosa still has got it. Absolutely. Living legend and still one of the best in the sport, but you know, there's a lot of talent coming out of Australia and they're all barking at Brad DeLosa's back. It's been a good day. The, uh, probably the single buck probably cost you there a little bit. You were nice and solid up to that point. How did you feel? How did you feel it went? Um, yeah, struggled on the single buck a little bit today, unfortunately. That's all right. You, you joined the competition. Good to be back on the stage. Yeah, it's great to be back. I love coming every time. Mate, we're really looking forward to seeing you uh, coming up in the early future. Congratulations and have, have, have a part of it. I'm going to hand it over to Dan. He's going to race and try and find Brad at the back there. That's right. He's just over having to a chat to Dave Rumor. I am here with Brad DeLosa. Brad, you're sucking in the big ones, mate. You've been there. You've done it all. Does it ever get any easier? No, it just gets harder, I think. No, yeah. There you go. I was just going to say, what are you expecting for the rest of the day, mate? Are you, you feeling confident? I was very surprised to not see you in the top four from the first round, but um, you, you think you can pick up the pace? Yeah, I was definitely a little bit rusty in the qualifying there, so had a bit of a break, you know, through the COVID period, and... Uh, I'm not getting any younger, so it's not getting any easier. How was COVID up there in the Blue Mountains, mate? You get it done? Yeah, we're pretty lucky, mate. We've got a little bit of fresh air around us, so, yeah, everything was pretty good. But, uh, yeah, it was you guys down here got the worst of it, I think, so. Good on you, Brad. Mate, looking forward to seeing you across the day. Absolute world champion, quite literally, and um, world-class bloke as well. Looking forward to seeing what he can do over the course of the day down at his main... So looking at the slow-mo here, really great start by both of these guys. Blake Meyer right there with Brad DeLosa on this stock saw. And there you see the official times now. Brad DeLosa's 127.96, 135.86 for Blake Meyer. Uh, DeLosa literally threw that stock saw away after he stopped the engine. And here, the cut through. And that's experience right there. DeLosa knows that he's cut through. He doesn't need to see the log fall over to the side or anything like that. And on this one here, we should see a huge hookup from Blake Meyer any second now. There it is. And then he had to reposition the saw and restart everything and Delosa was already at the bottom of his stroke and he had a huge cut now there is where it's really dangerous for Delosa because he needs to get that cut clean if he breaks that disc then it doesn't count and it's a DQ and that could have cost Delosa a spot in the quarterfinal and here again another block or hook up from Blake Meyer and Delosa was already on the standing block chop at that point moving over to the other side just when Blake Meyer started his standing block chop. So there was really no drama against Brad DeLosa in this particular case, and he will move on to the quarterfinal. The funny thing you have to pay attention to with Brad DeLosa, though, believe it or not, he tends to get faster as the day goes on. His lungs get warmed up, his muscles get warmed up, and the adrenaline starts to flow, and then he really starts to use that adrenaline to his advantage. So let's take a look at the Keats here in the quarterfinals because that's going to be very interesting. We'll have Braden Meyer take on Glenn Gillum, uh, Brody Dingle against Lawrence O'Toole and Mitch Argent versus Chris Owen, as well as Cody Steers and Brett DeLosa. And I thought Brett DeLosa was very funny uh, saying it doesn't get easier, it only gets harder. But like you said, he tends to get faster and faster the longer the competition lasts. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect lawn and more time for garden projects. Robotic mowers by Still, only from your local Still dealer. Well, Troy, I would love to be in St. Kilda at oh, yeah. this very moment. Just, <laughs> you know, having that crowd, watching the competition, everything feels so 
normal. Sign me up, put me in your luggage, I'm going with you for sure. I'd love to see that you in my luggage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, need, you need a wheelie bag with big strong wheels and shocks. Huh? <laughs> but, but, but it's one thing I have to say, it seems like the old boys are still kicking butts, aren't they? Hey, absolutely. I mean, I Brad DeLosa, competition, Brad, Brad DeLosa is just, I mean, the guy's a legend. He, he had a rough one uh, last year at the, at the virtual Australian Championships, but... You, you, can't, you can't hold back. You can't hold back. Well, there's one thing you have to say. You always need tolerance, don't you? We are Timber Sports. United by passion for the sport. And competition. You chop down racism. And say yes to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. Say yo to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. Should I need a tyrone? Or it's tak tolerance. Ja to tolerance. We are Tumble Sport. That is exactly the tolerance I was talking about. And that is what makes Steel Timber Sports so very special. And the trophy format is also oh. something that makes Steel Timber Sports very special. I mean, I can see the smile on your face, but... Uh, I love it. I know you love it, but what, what is so special about the formats? And, and, and tell me, why is everybody heavily breathing after the single bug? Well, I mean, uh, the format itself just means that you have to take all of those skills that you would normally be able to focus on one individual discipline and put them to work in all four of these disciplines, and it's like back to back to back. So you have to have the accuracy, you have to have the power, you have to have the stamina, you have to be able to mix it all together. So it's crazy. Yeah, and, and there's loads more to come. Yep. Uh, we're going to take a closer look at the next events uh, that we're going to be showing to you. Oh, you can see on the 8th of May, that's all we're doing right at this very moment. Um, on the 3rd of uh, July, we've got the Benelux Championship 2021 coming up. Uh, that's going to be a live stream as well. On the 31st of July, the Rookie European Championship from Munich. Say that three times fast. <laughs> I can't even do it, do it once. And then on the, also on the 31st of July, we've got the European Trophy, of course. Uh, and we've talked about the format so that's going to be a classic on the 21st of august the german championship in uh, gelsenkirchen we're going live on that and maybe just maybe we might have some live audience uh, fingers crossed well. yes fingers crossed no doubt about that of course 12th of september make sure not to miss out on that one the world trophy european qualifier and on the 2nd of october oh, da, 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 where's the drum roll the individual world championship also here in munich germany and uh, oh wow that's gonna be the big highlights at the end of the year and you know it's been a lifesaver through this as well no in in the, the whole time we're in lockdown or whatever being able to go back and watch old clips huh <laughs> yeah oh yeah no, no doubt about that and especially on amazon prime you can watch steel timber sports um yeah and some of that coming up right now Oh my god, how close is this? It's one of the closest heats we've had all day long, and it's Australia! When the crowd start, you know, uh, erupting, screaming, shouting, it's, it just really does give you goosebumps. It's pretty awesome to compete in front of a crowd like this. I've been working my ass off the last five years to get to this point. Some people nervous, it doesn't make me nervous. It makes me ready to go. To come here to the World Championships is, is one of my dreams. It has been ever since as a kid. Media, in of course, is 
the Chopperoos dominating and winning the world. So Champions. once again, so once again, let's take a look at the quarter finalists here in Heat One. Braden Meyer will take on Glenn Gillam in Heat Two. We're going to see Brody Dingle and Lawrence O'Toole in Heat Three. It'll be Mitch Argent and Chris Owen. And last but not least, in heat number four, Cody Steers taking on Brad Belosa. Oh, wow. What about these quarterfinals? Couldn't be much better, could they? Well, that's amazing. I mean, Braden Meyer and Glenn Gillum, this is a battle we've seen big a few boys. times in the yeah. past. Some big boys going at it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing Mitch Argent and uh, Chris Owen. And, of course, Cody the Haircut Steers going up against Lawrence O'Toole. A couple of big boys there, too. But uh, check this first heat out. Braden Meyer and Glenn Gillum. And I know these guys have trained a lot together. They're part of the Chopperoos team together. They know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, but it's interesting to, you know, to, to follow the competition between them as well as the camaraderie between them. Uh, when they get on stage, all that camaraderie goes straight out the window until the competition opens, and then it's all hugs and kisses after that. So, uh, yeah, these two guys, an interesting pair. to see Braden Meyer for the first time. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's going to be really exciting to see how much faster that axe has gotten. Uh, I was astounded. I think it was 2015 at the uh, Trophy in Austria. It was the first time I've ever seen that axe move uh, as fast as that, and it was just crazy. There's nothing quite like it, and, uh, and Glenn Gillum uh, right there. But this is the thing in this particular format. Because it's one after the other, you're going from that stock saw. Okay, you're not expending a ton of energy on the stock saw. You've got to get it positioned right. You've got to push it with the right pressure and so on and so forth. The first time where you're really getting going with the energy is that underhand chop, and that's where you're going to get to see Braden Meyer shine. Glenn Gillum, though... Has been. I mean, we saw that earlier on in uh, in that uh, last chance qualifier when he made it through into this heat here. He's no slouch with that axe. I mean, and he wasn't using the big axe on the standing block chop. But boy, I tell you, these guys they're uh, they're rocking and rolling these days in Australia, and the Australians are responsible really for this new style of cutting. Gillum again, just fully concentrated. It's funny to watch his routine. It's always the same. There's no changes in his preparation routine. He gets that saw on his lap, and then he just goes completely still until he gets the word to start it. faster than Glenn Gillum and both of them using that really harsh angle 30 degrees plus on that downstroke and Braden Meyer is through first and he'll get a big advantage as we go and watch this axe oh he gets it stuck but now he gets that thing moving bang 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 look how quick he's going with that axe but look at Glenn Gillum in the background just as fast as Braden Meyer and that's talking about these two guys training together and working with each other but Braden Meyer insane as he gets that thing open and done with and moves over to the single buck Glenn Gillum has to try and catch up now otherwise he is going to be out Remember, it's single elimination now. If you lose this heat, you're done and dusted, boys and girls. And Braden Meyer has a good solid lead as he is more than halfway through on that single buck. That two-meter saw really working to his advantage. Barely looks like he's breathing there as he takes those breaths in and out and moves over to the standing block chop now. Braden Meyer with a distinct one, two, three, four, five, six, seven second lead at the moment. As he moves over to the other side, how quick is this? Braden Meyer looks like he's going to win this one. This is a strong discipline for Glenn Gillum, but he's just too far back to be able to catch up to Braden Meyer. Two more blows should do it for Braden Meyer. One, two, and there it goes. Braden Meyer in a time of 122.89, and Glenn Gillum not that far behind. There is that five-second difference, so he did make up a couple of seconds towards the end there in the standing block chop, which is his strongest discipline, but Braden Meyer was so quick on that single buck and that underhand chop. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What a great heat to start things off here in the quarterfinal. Oh, and Glenn Gillum is just trying all he can do to get air into those lungs. 
So that was a clear win from Braden Meyer, and we're going to hear from Glenn Gillum now. The, uh, just, just a little bit sort of uh, hung up there just on that single buck. Uh, just one of them days. The, how, is, how, how was the wood comparatively from the last round? Uh, pretty good. Yeah. You, you enjoying being back on the stage? Oh, I love it. You ready for a beer? Oh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Mate, great to have you back. <laughs> great personality of the Ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Gillum, everybody, Victorian superstar. No a man of many words. <laughs> he's, he's oh, the big one. Braden Meyer. How are you feeling, my man? Oh, I'm feeling good. Just a few rough logs. It doesn't help. So um, the rest of the day, what kind of headspace do you have to get yourself in to, to tackle it? Do you just go back out the back and do a bit of meditation, a bit of yoga, a bit of downward dog? Yeah, heads down, bums up. That's the sort of thing. But no, nah, just keep at it and um, hopefully get the win. Charge through. That's the way. Braden Meyer, expect big things from this man. As the day progresses and as we work our way through the Champions Trophy here. All right, All right, let's take a look at this start again. Braden Meyer just a hair ahead of Glenn Gillum on that stock saw. Glenn Gillum, depending on that angle, but uh, started working the saw motor down at the same time, and he was maybe two steps behind Braden Meyer. Braden did get a hookup off that first hit, but then it was just bang, 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 bang with that axe. I mean, it was so insanely fast, but you could see in the background the pace of Glenn Gillum is not that far off of Braden Meyer's pace. So obviously he's been working on that quick axe as well. And Braden Meyer here in the situation... You can see he was well into this block. And there you see the official times are up for Braden Meyer, 122.60 and 126.72 for Glenn Gillum. And Braden Meyer moves over to that standing block chop with a huge five-second lead. Well, that was actually around seven seconds, but then uh, Glenn Gillum did do a little bit of catching up there and uh, ended up with a five-second differential between the two of them. Good job by both of these guys, though, but unfortunately for Glenn Gillum, it's Braden Meyer moving on to the semifinals. Our next heat coming up will be Brody Dingle going up against Lawrence O'Toole. Curious to see how Lawrence O'Toole is going to manage here today. He looked really, really relaxed and really confident in that last chance qualifier to make it into this quarterfinal. Everybody seeming to enjoy a fantastic day. As we take a look at our quarterfinal lineup, Brody Dingle and Lawrence O'Toole. You can see the difference, 15 seconds difference in the personal best between these two gentlemen. So Lawrence O'Toole with the distinct advantage here. And Brody Dingle setting up on stage left. was inducted a couple of weeks ago. Big congratulations to Lawrence O'Toole. Doing the family name proud. I'd be very surprised if he didn't get inducted to that Hall of Fame, but there you have it. In the Hall of Fame alongside his grandfather. Pretty impressive. And a consummate professional. Very methodical, isn't he? It's hard to kind of penetrate that facade that Lawrence puts up. He very, concentrates very much on the uh, the task at hand. We're going to warm up the MS661 chainsaws here. All right, here we go, getting those saws warmed up. And as we just heard Dan and Gaz talking about uh, the uh, family name of O'Toole is uh, synonymous with royalty in Australia. And Lawrence O'Toole just got inducted into the Woodchoppers Hall of Fame there. Fantastic. Congratulations to him as we start competition and 
Brody Dingle starts off with a good first cut. Lawrence O'Toole looking pretty fast here, though, as it looks like both of those cookies are going to drop pretty much evenly. Both guys heading over to that underhand chop to start the second part of this competition with the axe. A quick stick by Lawrence O'Toole and Brody Dingle and O'Toole both moving over to the backside at the same time. Wow, this is going to be a close one between them so far. The advantage, I think, is going to be in who can get onto that single buck first. It looks like it's going to be O'Toole, and this is where he excels, as we saw in that last chance qualifier. Once he gets that thing going, if he can keep that uh, flow going with those long legs and that tall frame of his, then he really will have a massive advantage as they get to the uh, standing block job. But Brody Dingle, he is definitely holding his own against O'Toole. And these heats are only going to get more and more intense as we get closer to the semifinals and the finals. But O'Toole drops that cookie first and moves to the standing block job. Oh, a huge hookup by Brody Dingle. And he finally gets it off and moves over to the standing block himself now. O'Toole, will he take that leisurely stroll around? Not so much this time. He put a little bit more urgency into it. Not a lot, but you know, you could see he didn't uh, just saunter around to the backside. I think maybe three or four more drives from O'Toole should do it. And there, wow, two drives. And that was a time of 127.54 for O'Toole. Brody Dingle, just about getting to the 40 second, or 140 mark. Now yeah, 137.91, 10 seconds off pace here. So a good heat by both of these guys, but Lawrence O'Toole looking strong as we get into the second part of the competition here in the quarterfinals in heat number two. Over the two of the judges. Here is Lawrence O'Toole. Well done, Lawrence. We're going to grab both our competitors here. Gaz so we'll see Lawrence O'Toole, O'Toole in the semifinals, and we're going to hear from him first because he ran away after the first uh, first try. No interview then. Billy, the how did that, that, that round go for you? Mate, I was flat out. <laughs> how, how's the wood comparity for the, from the last few rounds? Honestly, I've been drawing terrible, so i am not a good luck yet, but still lucky to be in the competition, so that's the main thing. Well, hopefully if you get a few bad ones to start, you can uh, finish off strong, mate. Yeah, that's it. Congratulations, mate. Well done. Lawrence O'Toole through the next round. Going to hand it over to Dan Anstey. Brody Dingle's just putting the axe away over here. How are you feeling after that, Brody? That was um, impressive, mate. Finished top four at the start of the day. You must be pretty happy with your performance out here. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was a big improvement from last year, so that's what I'm sort of about. Is, yeah. Trying to get better every every event, yeah. Your underhand chop is very impressive, I've got to say. Now, there's two kinds of schools of thought on that. There's the big methodical strokes or just attack that wood and get as many strikes in, and that's the, the method you go for. Yeah, I've um, only just come back to that style. I, uh, I tried the slower technique and it didn't work for me, so... Yeah, going back to what I know. Tell you what, just keep doing that, mate. You did really well. Big round of applause for Brody Dingle, who we will be seeing exit here at St Kilda, but he can hold his head up high. He started the day sensationally, finishing in that top four, but, you know, to come up against Lawrence O'Toole. So Lawrence O'Toole talking about he's been drawing not so good wood. I'm amazed that, uh, you know, if he draws some good wood in the next rounds, he might be uh, absolutely destroying the competition because he is looking good here. But uh, that was a great start by O'Toole. And here we can see Brody Dingle really was right there with him at the underhand chop. It was maybe two strokes difference between, nah, just one stroke there as Dingle hops off his block and moves over to the single buck. But here... It was the difference maker as it was in the last chance qualifier. O'Toole is just so strong in this single buck. And that is, you know, it's 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 the skill naturally, naturally but it's also the fact that he is uh, six foot 45 and uh, just, you know, those long legs really work to his advantage. And then coming over here, the last little lop, and you could see Brody Dingle had quite a few hits before he would get that top of the block off and uh, Lawrence O'Toole, this was no problem for him. Good competition though between these two guys at the start and then it was that single buck that was the difference maker for Lawrence O'Toole against Brody Dingle in this quarterfinal number two.
All right, Mitch Argent, the guy I'm hoping will do me proud and win this one there in the red shirt. Next to him, Chris Owen, who we saw come through the last chance qualifier. Um, Mitch has been looking real good the last little while. I, I really hope that he can pull it out today because uh, I opened my mouth and said I thought that he was going to do well. But uh, I wish him the best here because uh, he is among the top three guys. He's a three-time gold winner in the Chopperoos in the World Team Championships and a two-time Australian trophy holder in 2017 and 18. So there is an opportunity for him to regain the trophy title. But again, it comes down to your fitness level and making sure that you can really, really focus here. And look at that personal best from Mitch Argent, 58-12 in this particular format. So that's a solid time if he can pull that off today. And if he drew good wood, then uh, hey, even better. All right, coming out on stage now in quarterfinal number three, Mitch Argent and Chris Owen. And again, look at that personal best from Mitch Argent. Just under 59 seconds for this discipline. That's absolutely crazy when we're looking at times of 120, 125 as good times today. Of course, the wood, wood plays a role here, but... Uh, yeah, it all comes down to how you're feeling, your fitness level, and a little bit of luck as well. But Mitch Argent is uh, looking, obviously, really confident in this competition and going up against Chris Owen, who had to battle his way through the last chance qualifier. Mitch Argent should be a little bit more fresh as we get down to competition here. Ready to go. We're going to hand it over to the judges and get this next in over the way. All right, the boys warming up their saws here. Mitch Argent in the burgundy jersey, left side of your screen. Chris Owen in the teal jersey, right side of your screen. Here we go. Good start by both of them. Mitch Argent just a hair quicker on that stock saw as he gets that first cut looking very good so far. Chris Owen right there with him. The cookie drops for Mitch Argent first, but Chris Owen just a step behind as they head towards the underhand chop. Now, both of these guys, quick axes as we saw. Chris Owen had that fast axe earlier on. Mitch Argent, no slouches. He is hammering away on that block. He turns to the other side of his block just ahead of Chris Owen. Mitch Argent in the lead on this one now. Let's see who gets through first. Oh, a big hookup by Chris Owen, giving the advantage to Mitch Argent as he moves forward towards that single buck. That two meter long saw takes a ton of energy to get started and keep it moving. And Mitch Argent is looking good here. Time is just passing 48 seconds as they're getting down through halfway point of that single buck. Chris Owen playing a good game of catch up though as Mitch Argent is almost at the bottom and Chris Owen is caught up with him and now they're dead even. Oh, but a huge catch by Chris Owen and he has to restart that saw and Mitch Argent has already moved over to the standing block chop. He's got a slight lead. Chris Owen there with them now. Argent moved to the backside of his block. Remember, you have to cut from two sides of the block. Chris Owen hasn't moved over to the other side of his. Mitch Argent with the advantage. Chris Owen looks spent and Argent drops the block in 124.36. Chris Owen breathing hard. He didn't have much energy left after that last chance qualifier. Does he have it to drive through three more hits to get that block off? He does and finally does it in 140.12. Fantastic job, but Mitch Argent will move on to the semifinals. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, Steve.
going to grab Chris, mate. You were looking fantastic there. And then the, the, those last few strokes, it just didn't want to let go. Yeah, that's when I hit the wall. And that's where it cost me. You, 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 were, you, you guys were pretty much neck and neck. And, like, and obviously, knowing how good, obviously, Mitch is in the standing block, you knew you needed to be with him going into that standing block. I knew. I thought I had to be in front of him. <laughs> yeah, no, I, um, I tried as hard as I could through the single, but... Yeah, once it got to that last little bit, that one little jag, that one moment of not giving it everything, and that's what cost it. Mate, a fantastic day for you. Look forward to seeing you very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Owen. I'm over here with Mitch Argent. Mitch, how's the wood fairing today, mate? Yeah, no, I've been pretty lucky. I haven't threw too many bad ones, but um, hopefully keep going all right and drawing all pretty good. I had the misery whip. Was she giving you a bit of misery? Oh, it always does, and especially in this race. But you, when you get to the standing block, if you're ahead, do you start getting pretty confident there? Do you know if you're onto that first, is it curtains, or do you still, do you still think someone could come, come from behind and take it? Yeah, I can back myself with the standing block. You know, I'd probably take a few risks, but um, you don't really know where the other fellas are at, so it's a bit hard to know what you've got to do. Good on you, Mitch. Well done. We'll be seeing him back. Won't be the last time we talk to Mitch Argent up on the big stage, I'll tell you that much. We'll have a replay up on the screen now. Hands on the block. There we go. So taking a look at the slow-mo, Mitch Argent was on that stock saw. Yeah, just maybe a toenail faster than Chris Owen was, but uh, not that much. And you can see here, 1-1000, one, 2-1000 one, in the slow-mo, so it's maybe a half a second in normal speed that Mitch Argent was ahead moving over to the underhand chop. And here on the underhand chop, these guys were neck and neck, but then Chris Owen had a huge hookup at the bottom of his last few strokes on the backside, and that gave the end right there. That's where it was, and that was the two-stroke difference to get Mitch Argent over to that single buck. And then in the single buck, it was just a bit of bad luck at the mid-lower point of the cut for Chris Owen as he got really stuck. Maybe we get to see it here. Ah, uh, no, this was actually a clean cut. Ah, oh, there it is. There's the, the, that stick right at the last stroke for Chris Owen. And then Mitch Argent, once he's on that standing block chop, like you heard, he feels pretty confident. But, you know, with a guy like Chris Owen coming at you from behind, you don't want to mess around and take any risks there. But you heard it from Chris Owen himself. He was absolutely shattered by the time he got to the standing block and said he would have liked to have been ahead first, but uh, didn't happen and Chris Owen is unfortunately eliminated and Mitch Argent will move on to the semi-final. So we got one more heat to go in this quarterfinal and that's heat number four between Cody Steers and Brad DeLosa. So as you heard off the top of the show, Cody Steers was injured last year, and that really affected his preparation coming into the virtual Australian Championship. But uh, seems like he is in full health and has opted for a much better haircut than he had last year, which I'm happy to see. He's going to be going up against Brad DeLosa. Now you can see the personal best between these two guys is a telltale sign of who has the advantage, but... Like I said, anything can happen. What I do say is that Brad DeLosa tends to get faster as the competition moves on. So this is not to say that Cody Steers doesn't have a chance against Brad DeLosa. It's just to say that he's one of those guys that seems to become stronger the more pressure is on. And that just comes from years and years of experience. And Cody Steers is uh, doing his best to gain that experience himself. He has had two silver medals in the trophy, placing second in both years, 2017 and 2019. A lot of preparation in this particular discipline for Brad DeLosa, as this is a discipline that he excels at, that single buck, and this is often where he wins these particular competitions in the, in the trophy format. And like I've been saying off the top of the show, I love the trophy format. It's so exciting to be a part of it. And uh, the fact that there's audience involved 
insane kill to now with this being back into a real live situation is so fantastic for us as commentators as well as for those people in the audience so back to some semblance of normality after 15 months of craziness so Cody steers a couple of prep uh, lifts and here we go Good start by both guys. Cody steers right there with Brad DeLosa. DeLosa looking clean on that cut. And, oh, they both drop really close to each other. Steers grabbing that axe as he moves over. And look at how quick his hands are going. Wow. He is much faster on the axe than Brad DeLosa. Is that going to be the difference maker here for Cody Steers? We'll find out as Brad DeLosa is very, very strong, but Cody Steers surprisingly fast with that axe. Let's see. Oh, he takes a step down. Big problem there as he hooks up, and that is going to cost him as they come to the single buck. He was looking fantastic in that underhand chop, but just had a problem stepping off the log, and then a big delay as he had to make one final hit to break it clean. Cody Steers in tough now against the guy who excels in this particular discipline. That single buck is so strong for Brad DeLosa, but Cody Steers doing well to hold his own, and he's even, a, yeah, doing a pretty good job to catch up. Five or six more strokes, and he'll be over to that standing block chop, but Brad DeLosa has a distinct advantage as he's already going to move on to the other side here on his standing block chop, and that's trouble for Cody Steers, but look at this. Cody Steers done a good job to try and catch up to DeLosa here. Will he be able to do it? He's got some huge hits there. No! Brad DeLosa drops it in 121.74. But what a fantastic job by Cody Steers in a 123.34. And I'm telling you, people, I'm telling you that if he had not stepped off that log on the underhand chop, he would have beat Brad DeLosa. And I think DeLosa knows it. Look at him. He is gutted, spent, completely wasted. He needs to save some energy or regain some energy for the semi-final because Brad DeLosa's made it through in a tough heat against Cody Steers. Woo! I don't know what to say about that one. Probably the most exciting heat so far, and let's see what Brad has to say about it. Mate, you, you looked really, really solid there, just consistent the whole way through. You had a couple of hits um, on Cody going into the standing block, but he came home quite strong there, only ended up being one hit. How did you feel? Hey, I'm pretty knackered. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the, 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 I, I can imagine. I can say that, taking those big, big breaths in now. You're through to the, ne the next round. How, how do you feel in terms of what's, what would you say, obviously, everyone watching here, is your strongest discipline in the, these particular ones? Oh, I don't know. I've been singling really well today. Underhands haven't been probably going quite as well, but, uh, yeah, then I cut pretty well in the underhands. So. I just need a spell, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> He's out here, ladies and gentlemen, Brad Delosa. Give a big round of applause, guys. Brad Delosa is through to the next final. Big ups to Cody Steers as well. Gave it his all. It was just behind by a stroke and a half, so he can hold his head up high, having made it to the quarterfinals and only missing out of the semifinal by one. All right, of let's analyze this a little bit more. Okay, both of these guys, Cody and Brad pretty much dead even at the start of the stock saw. Now, if you watch, both of them have a very similar style. Both of them super concentrated. Watch when this cookie drops, though. Those things rip away. Cody steers a half second behind, not even. A few hundredths of a second. And what was super impressive here, though, is how quickly Cody Steers was working that axe. I don't remember him moving that axe that quickly ever. And this is exactly a testament to what I was talking about earlier, how everybody is taking a, a page out of Braden Meyer's book with that axe on the underhand chop. And you can see here, there is going to be a, a hit where he steps off the log, where he was thinking maybe one last drive to get it through, and uh, he got a little bit off balance, steps off the log, has to come back up, can't get the drive clean, and then finally manages to get through. But by that time, Brad DeLos has moved over to his king's discipline, that single buck. And here, you just can't let Brad DeLosa get there first. You've got to be right there with him or a five-minute lead ahead in order to be able to win against him in this particular discipline. But I got to give props to Cody Steers. He did a fantastic job. And if you look here at the standing block chop, 
Brad moves over to the other side here while Cody Steers was still cutting on his first side, but Cody Steers did a great job of catching up to Brad here in this discipline. And I'm telling you, if he had not had the problem on the underhand chop, Cody Steers would have won this one. It wouldn't have been by much, but he would have won that one probably by one one hundredth of a second, but that's all you really need in those cases. So if Cody Steers can keep that kind of a pace in the future, I think we're going to see him doing a fantastic job down the road. So let's take a look at the bracket here, Marcus. Oh my word, how good was that fourth <laughs> heat? Absolutely fantastic. And we've got a great semi-final coming up because that's going to be Braden Meyer versus Lawrence O'Toole and Mitch Argent against Brad DeLosa. Absolutely devastating. That was unreal. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. For a better way to buy garden power tools, go to your local steel dealer. They'll familiarize you with the tool and can get it ready to go. Find yours at steel.com.au. Better steel. Well, Troy, that was a great analysis of the fourth heat from your side. But what about that first heat? Glenn Gillum, Braden Meyer. Glenn Gillum, he's like my favorite interview partner. Not a man <laughs> of many words, but always very entertaining. And Braden Meyer, I have never seen him with a cleaner face than today. I know. He, you know, he's, he's been shaving. He, he's been shaving, he, taking care of himself. He's he trying to be faster, you know, like... Not getting that wind caught up in his yeah, beard. Maybe he was just checking the axe to make sure it's really sharp <laughs> enough. Uh, who knows? <laughs> maybe he has. Um, if you had to explain the, the steel timber sports competition to somebody who's new to the sport, uh, what would you say? War. That's uh, absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's, there's. It's hard to describe to somebody who's never actually been involved or seen it live. So being able to describe this, this sport to somebody who's never seen it is like, uh, I don't know, you, you just have to kind of see it live. I remember my first time being at a live event and, and feeling the energy from the audience and seeing the athletes on stage. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's a family that's worldwide. It's, it's, uh, it's absolutely, you know, there's Australia, there's New Zealand, there's Sweden, there's, there's France, there's Germany, there's Austria. There's all these different countries that are involved in the steel timber sports. But it really is the timber sports family that is worldwide. That's such a huge difference. So it's, you know, it's incredible. You just have to see it live. That's all I can say. So let's take a closer look at the Steel Timber Woods world. Hey Timber Sports World, it's Matt Slingerland here. Hi, ich bin Adi Münzenmeier. I'm Martha King. G'day, I'm Brad Delais. It's the Michael Dubitsky. Ciao a tutti, sono Michael Lelping. Dios, me fare Hi fans. Yes, the robot. I'm Bryden Moss. He's 24 years of age, I believe he's still our current world record holder in the underhand top. During COVID, I moved to El Paso, Texas, uh, took a travel therapy job, wanted to help out the community. In this current situation with the COVID-19, I've just spent a lot of time um, at home, spending time with our newborn baby Grace. Just doing some stuff around the house, uh, doing uh, bathroom re remodel. Doing hobbies I enjoy, such as steelhead fishing and mushroom foraging. In the free time that remains, I try to travel more and spend time with my family. Definite advantage now for Army Kugler from Austria. We're a strong community and we love our sport, so keep training, stay positive. Es kann bloß besser werden. Wir halten jetzt alle voll durch. Still keeping up with some of the training, because eventually when this thing's over, we're going to have a competition sometime. Hopefully everyone's still training hard and, and keeping it on what we do over the off season and hopefully um, we're up and going as soon as we can. We're a community. We're in this together. It is just event, the excitement in the audience, 
the fans absolutely going for it. It is loud as can be in here. The fans are going bananas, and we are going to see some epic competition here. I want to say I miss you guys. I can't wait till we get to compete against each other again. Ich hoffe, dass es euch allen gut geht, dass ihr gesund seid, dass eure Familien gesund sind. Take care of yourselves, but also take care of others. Stay home, keep training, because I know I am. Ich freue mich auf euch, auf die Fans, auf die Follower, auf alle, die den Sport begeistern und verfolgen. Be nice and kind to people as much as you can. Ich hoffe, ihr bleibt alle gesund und wir können uns demnächst wieder auf einen wunderschönen Wettkampf sehen. Stay safe and I hope to see you all soon. Ich wünsche euch alles Gute und wir sehen uns. Bis dann. Stay safe, be smart, and uh, train a lot because I'm coming for you. Nice for you, love, Bugia. Cheers. And that's awesome. One big family worldwide. It was just what I was talking about a little bit. You know, it's it's uh, it really is a family, and uh, you know, families care for each other. And and you saw that in that uh, in that short clip there. But, but, but are these guys going to care for each other mm, in the no. semifinals? I don't <laughs> think so. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so it's going to be Braden Meyer against Lawrence O'Toole and Mitch Argent taking on Brad Delosa. Oh my word! I have no favorite in neither of the two semifinals. Well. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, Braden Meyer against Lawrence O'Toole. Let's look at their individual strengths. I mean, Braden Meyer, we know underhand chop, he's a killer. Yeah, you, you can't you can't get any better than him on the underhand chop. Where we're talking about uh, the the single buck, it's Lawrence O'Toole. There's no two ways about it. The misnomer for me is going to be the standing block chop. Both of them are really strong in that discipline, and uh, it's it's uh, also going to be about how they can control that adrenaline when it comes to the stock saw. That's the start of this discipline, the, of this heat. So, you know, it, it, I think for me it's going to come down to if Braden Meyer can get through that underhand chop to the single buck with a good lead ahead of Lawrence O'Toole to win it against him. But, you know, Lawrence O'Toole is so strong uh, at the... Uh, standing block chop that uh, it could be it, it comes down to the last couple of blows there we'll see as far as that second heat we're talking about Mitch Arjun against Brad Delosa I gotta be honest Brad Delosa looked exhausted after that semi-final heat or that uh, quarterfinal heat and uh, Mitch Arjun uh, you know he didn't sail through his heat but he did have the advantage of not having to battle through the last chance qualifier so he's going to be a bit more fresh than Brad Delosa so I'll give him the advantage there All right, here we go. Semi-final number one. Two different styles as far as that stock saw is concerned. Who has the advantage in this case? It's anybody's guess, but like I said, it's going to come down to who can control that adrenaline. And oh boy, Braden Meyer, the first of the underhand chop. And you don't want that happening if you are Lawrence O'Toole when you know how good Braden Meyer is at that underhand. O'Toole moving over to the other side of his underhand, barring any major mistakes. Braden Meyer should move over to that single buck ahead of O'Toole, and he does. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. Uh, just about four second lead as he heads to the single buck. Braden Meyer with the advantage now, but watch O'Toole come strong on this one. Look at this, O'Toole working hard. He's already halfway through. He's caught up to Braden Meyer in that single buck, and now it's gonna come down to who can drop that cookie first and go to a discipline where they're both very strong. And O'Toole is caught up to Braden Meyer and has taken over the lead. Unbelievable, Braden Meyer is now coming from behind against O'Toole in the standing block chop. Who's it gonna be that's going to go to the final? Oh my goodness, how tight is this? Both of them moving over to the other side out that standing block at the same time. Braden Meyer, Lawrence O'Toole. Braden Meyer with the power, Lawrence O'Toole on the backside. Oh my goodness, one stroke difference. And it is Braden Meyer winning just by the hair on his shaved chinny chin chin. Lawrence O'Toole could have had it, 
and it looked like that block was just holding on by a thread and just was a hair too late. Unbelievable. And all the hair references are going out of control here right now. But what a battle between these two warriors here today in Australia. Absolutely fantastic. And what about that comeback from the underhand to get through the single buck to the standing block by Lawrence O'Toole. Holy smokes, folks, that was bananas. Yeah, it was pretty close, mate. So credit to Braden, he's been going well. Mate, we, there's not much we can say. This guy's an absolute superstar. Guys, give a huge round of applause. Lawrence O'Toole, we know you're going to be back. Absolute superstar. Brayden, we won't take up much of your time, brother. You're sucking in the big ones. Gee, that was a powerful performance. How much left have you got in the tank? Oh, enough to win a mate, so don't worry about that. Oh, we love that. What are you feeling? Look at the crowd loving that. What are you feeling really strong on in particular today? Is anything just really working for you? Definitely not the underhands today. I seem to... Can't click, but... Um, just go for a break now in the final. Got nothing to lose, so... Powerful leather and straight into it. That's it, brother. You're through to the grand final. Well done. Give it up. Brad Meyer there, going to get done this year. He's so happy what he couldn't get done last year, what he missed out to Lawrence. I have no words, but this was an amazing battle. Thin to win for both of these guys on this first cut. Braden Myers, I'm going to say, is about a centimeter and a half thinner than Lawrence O'Toole's. But look at this, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, two, one thousand. That's a one and a half second lead heading over towards the underhand chop. And even though Braden Myers says, yeah, I'm not clicking with my underhand, he was kicking butt there. And uh, a 117.16 for Braden Meyer, 118.26. How close is that? Unbelievable. Braden Meyer first over to the other side in the underhand chop. And here was the distinctive difference between these two guys. Braden Meyer cut through that log. He probably could have left a little bit earlier, but he wanted to be sure. And there you see the feet of Lawrence O'Toole. He finally gets through and heads over. Now, Braden Meyer, I counted it out. Maybe it was three, but I thought about four second advantage here on that single buck. And this is exactly what I said before this heat. The single buck is O'Toole's absolute strength. And he showed that here. He actually dropped that block, catching up those three to four seconds to move over to the standing block chop, but I think he was a bit too lackadaisical on the standing block chop going around to the other side and went with Braden Meyer at exactly the same time. And if we get a real close look, Braden Meyer dropped it and it was just a single half blow for Lawrence O'Toole and Braden Meyer wins this one only by the slightest margin. What a great heat though. All right, so we know that Braden Meyer is going to go to the final. Lawrence O'Toole will battle one more time today in the small final or consolation final for the bronze medal position. And our next heat between those two guys, Mitchell Argent and Brad DeLosa. Now we know that Brad DeLosa had to come through the last chance qualifier, so he's had one more heat on the day than Mitch Argent, which means that Mitch Argent should, in theory, be a little bit fresher than Brad DeLosa. But we've seen Brad DeLosa in past really an experienced performer just save that last little extra gear for these particular situations. Will he be able to pull that off as one of the granddaddy caddies of this sport and beat Mitch Argent? Or will Mitch Argent be a little bit too fresh for Brad DeLosa? We'll find out shortly as these two guys will come on stage for their heat. Heat number two in the semifinal. One of these gents is going to be taking on Braden Meyer in the grand final. The other will be taking on Lawrence O'Toole in the small final to work out who picks up third place. 
All righty. So let's see how things break down in this semifinal number two between Mitch Argent and Brad DeLosa. As I was saying, Mitch Argent will be the fresher of the two, having one heat less than Brad DeLosa as he had to battle through that last chance qualifier. But Brad DeLosa is not a man that you want to mess around with when it comes to this, and especially on that particular discipline, the single buck, as we saw with uh, Lawrence O'Toole earlier, he had a fantastic three-second catch-up on that single buck, and Brad Delos has been known to do crazier things than that. Mitch Argent, though, we did see that uh, he's been getting fast with that underhand chop, so it's going to be about who can get through the stock saw and really activate on that underhand chop. And again, it's the same situation as with Braden Meyer and Lawrence O'Toole. Can Mitch Argent get to the single buck before Brad DeLosa with a bit of an advantage? Let's find out. Here we go. Stands to Mark Timber. Three, two, one, go! Dead even start for both of these guys here in the stock saw. Mitch Argent slightly behind, I'm going to say, as Brad DeLosa drops that cookie, but they both move over to the underhand chop at about the same time and start hammering, and here comes the speed from Mitch Argent. Although he has slowed down a bit, and Brad DeLosa just a step ahead as he moves over to the other side before Mitch does. Argent now working hard on that block to try and get through before DeLosa. DeLosa and Argent moving over to the single buck at the same time exactly. This could be a disadvantage for Mitch Argent. Let's see if he can use that freshness to his advantage here in the single buck as DeLosa looks to be in control very, very nicely of his saw. Uh, who's going to drop that cookie first? We need that open picture again so we can see both of them at the same time. And it's going to be DeLosa going to the standing block chop and Mitch Argent about a second back now. And here is where Mitch Argent needs to really work that block and excel as best he can. Both of them move over to the other side of the standing block. It's going to come down to millimeters, literally, as Mitch Argent does it. Oh, my goodness, he did it. He came from behind after that single buck. Not by much, but it was enough. And Mitch Argent makes it to the final with a time of 117.16. Excuse me, 117.78. That's unofficial at the moment. And Brad DeLosa will go to the consolation final with a time of 120 dead even. Of course, that is still unofficial as well. Wow, what a heat there. And I'm going to hold true to my call that Mitch Argent is looking very good here today. So it's going to be fun to see if he can hold on against Braden Meyer in the final. They have it. All right, Brad, you have a breather quickly. Sorry, Mitch, we'll, uh, we'll grab you first up, brother. Outstanding work. Got to be happy with that. Where, where was the grief coming from, mainly? Hey, there's grief when they say go. None of, none of it's very fun. What are you feeling confident on today, though? I mean, obviously, your standing block is unbelievable. Are you feeling it's up to your best? I'm pretty confident I'm going to have a beer in about half an hour. Do you think... You'll be holding a trophy while you're having that beer? I'll be holding one, whether it's first or second, I don't know, but it'll be one of them. Good man, very humble. Mitch Argent, ladies and gents, we're going to be seeing oh. him in the grand final. Oh, I'll have a quick chat. I know, Brad, you're absolutely exhausted. Uh, mate, you, 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 you did everything that we thought you were going to. You, you went in for, with a single buck. You had two hits ahead, but Mitch Argent's just such a strong uh, like finisher. Uh, the, the, so close, but not quite today. Yeah, a little bit disappointing, you know, but credit to Mitch, you know, he cut a really good race and... <laughs> So strong in that standing block, I uh, yeah, started to fatigue a little bit then. I had that extra round early in the piece, which doesn't help when you're getting old. But uh, no, look, I was pretty happy with how I cut there and put up a good performance against these younger guys. Is always, you know, satisfying. Mate, fantastic stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause for Brad Delosa. We love big, bad Brad Delosa, consummate professional on the chopping stage and off it. One of the best blokes you'll meet. See if you can be lucky enough to have a frothy with him.
Popeye's rice. All right, so we're looking at the slow mo here, and you could see Brad DeLosa had a minor lead when he dropped the block just ahead of Mitch Argent, but it wasn't by much. I'm going to say a half a second max as they move over to the underhand chop. Mitch Argent didn't have the strongest underhand chop here, and uh, Brad DeLosa actually left the spot just ahead of Mitch Argent, and again, only by a fraction of a second. Here's where it got interesting. DeLosa, as we know, is so strong on this single buck, and he showed that uh, this is where he absolutely excels, even getting old, as he says. I mean, I wish I could be as fit at his age. Man. Um, but Mitch Argent, you know, you heard the guy say he's such a strong finisher, and he caught up to o or, excuse me, to Brad DeLosa and managed to actually get one blow faster than DeLosa. Right there it is as uh, he gets that uh, last thread holding that log on and here you can see the final drives from DeLosa there. What a great job by the legend, but uh, Mitch Argent moves on to the final and DeLosa will battle out for the bronze medal in the small final. Well, how good were these two semi-finals? Unbelievable. And that means we're going to have the small final Fighting for bronze, it will be Lawrence O'Toole and Brad DeLosa. And going for gold in the grand final, it will be Braden Meyer taking on Mitch Argent. Oh my <laughs> word. No predictions from my side. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed by, by all of these men. And uh, Meyer versus Argent. I, I, I'm not daring any prognosis, no way. That's a tough call. I mean, I'm with you there, absolutely. Braden Meyer is so strong. But the question is, did he save anything? Did he save anything for that uh, the last thing, yeah? Perfect lawn and more time for garden projects. Robotic mowers by Still, only from your local Still dealer. Well, the crowd in St. Kilda really loved those semifinals. I mean, Maya versus O'Toole, that was rock and roll in St. Oh, Kilda. Yeah, that was fantastic. I mean, uh, you saw it uh, from, from Braden Meyer against Lawrence O'Toole, and, and I called it, it's the, it's the absolute killer on that uh, single buck. And we've seen that with both of these guys, with, with uh, Brad DeLosa and Lawrence O'Toole, so strong on the single buck. And that single buck is a historical piece of equipment. You know, the motor saws and all that kind of stuff. They came later on, but the axes and and those single buck saws and, the, you know, the doubles that you see a lot of time, that's, those are historical things like what we see in yeah, the background Yeah, whoever here. wins today, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put a picture up of them. Yeah. Because this is the original extreme sports and everything you need to know about steel timber sports, well, that's coming up right now for your entertainment. Expert woodsman who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can chop one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry companies. Well. An axeman's gathering. This is Thomas losing the most to get to it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Rookie European Championship and the European Trophy on the 31st of July. On the 21st of August, there will be the German Championship. On the 12th of September, the World Trophy European Qualifier. And on the 2nd of October, the Individual World Championship here from Munich. And I'm so very much looking forward to all of these competitions because, you know, being part of, of, of the Australian Trophy now and then and getting that feeling of, of, of the crowd enjoying, oh, it's, it, it's just it's awesome. exciting. It's exciting to be back, yeah? yeah? It's more than just exciting. And these semifinals that we're going to see in just a few moments, oh, wow. Yeah. Take a look at the bracket. Lawrence Atul taking on Brad DeLosa in the small final, going for bronze, and then the grand finale. Braden Meyer against Mitchell Argent. Oh, yes. That's what we want to see. This is Steel Timber Sports at its finest. Absolutely. An interesting lineup in this small final. Bra uh, Brad DeLosa and, uh, and Lawrence O'Toole, two guys that are extremely strong in the single buck. That could be the tell-all for both of these guys. So we'll see how that uh, pans out. Well, I'm, I'm very much going to watch that. So if we have to make predictions... No, I don't want to make any predictions. Who do you yeah. think is going to win the small final? O'Toole or DeLosa? Mm. I'm going with DeLosa. I'm going to give it to O'Toole in this case because, uh, yeah, he seems like he might be a little bit spent, but uh, Lawrence O'Toole is just going from strength to strength to strength today, and it seems like his single buck is just really where he is dominating. He's got a strong single buck, so I think it's going to be O'Toole in this case. Okay, and I'm, I, I'm uh, not going to give you a reason, but in the grand final, I'm going with Braden Meyer, just because you said Mitch Argent. Is, well, I'm going uh, against you on that one. I'm going <laughs> to stick with Mitch Argent. So there we go. We got a battle. Uh, okay, you can see uh, hashtag Steel Timber Sports uh, is coming up. So uh, why not participate in this competition by sending us uh, your best posts uh, and your favorite pictures? Uh, I will take a picture of Troy while he's commentating, and you're going to love that. Trust oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's get back to St. Kilda. Let's go back to the two finals, the bronze medal game coming up first. And then, of course, uh, the grand final between Braden Meyer and Mitch Argent, who will take home the Australian Trophy 2021. It looks like everybody's having a great time in Australia. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, why wouldn't you? No masks, no separation. It's outdoor, friendly, fresh air. There's stuff going on. They're having a good time. Uh, I'm jealous. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> You know, it, you need to be able to... And it's just I mean, a, a bike ride from uh, from the city of Melbourne to St. Kilda. I did it in 2019. You can rent a bike and just, you know, casually cycle down to the beach. And St. Kilda is just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean... Great location uh, for, for this Australian... The country. whole area is fantastic. And, uh, you know, they're, they're slowly drifting into their winter season, but it seems like the weather is still quite friendly. People are out there enjoying themselves people getting the different discs because you see that one lad there he's got himself a, a little prize and earlier on I saw a bunch of kids streaming towards the fence line where the guys uh, you know uh, were, were giving out the, the free stuff so that's always one of the bonuses at these events here there's tons of stuff happening on uh, these events and they're always really family friendly which is another oh, aspect yes. of uh, Steel Timber Sports that's really really positive in these days and for whoever just joined us for this competition we had the uh, the women's championship uh, going on just before in, in st kilda as well and that was absolutely fantastic six uh, great athletes competing and i was more than impressed we saw world record we saw personal best yep so that, that was and one major nice upset as well right yes so indeed. uh Amanda Beams with, uh, was the, the top ranked athlete in this one, and she yeah. ended up in sixth place. So, you know, uh, it, but it, it happens. she's probably in great shape. But oh, yeah. Just, I mean, uh, was a little unlucky, maybe took one yeah. or two wrong decisions. And, and that's how it goes. I mean, still timber sports, you know, the, the athletes, they're all competing at the top level, and it's just small things that make the difference at yeah. the end. Got to be lucky to be good and good to be lucky. <laughs> I, like, I like that one. Yeah. I mean, really, it is. It, it's, uh, it, sometimes it comes down to luck of the draw, literally, because the, the wood is, uh, is really heavily controlled to make sure that it's fair for everybody. But occasionally, you know, you're going to get a draw where the wood just doesn't feel right for that particular athlete. The guy on the left stand might like the guy's wood on the right stand better than the other. So vice versa. It just depends on what your preference is. There is 
better wood for certain situations depending on the temperature outside the humidity outside if it's a sunny day or if it's you know raining whatever so um, you know there's all sorts of different things so and if it's like down I to say seconds you know it, it, this yeah, can make the difference it's down to milliseconds as we've seen here <laughs> yeah. in that last heat between Lawrence O'Toole and um, and and Braden Myers so you know it's a uh, <laughs> it's a tough one talking about O'Toole he's getting ready for this one yep So Brad DeLosa and Lawrence O'Toole heading up on stage. Now, what you have to notice is that Brad DeLosa is not a small man. He is tall. You see his height is 194. It says that Lawrence O'Toole is 195. I don't buy that for a bag of chips because Lawrence O'Toole looks like he's about a half a head taller than Brad DeLosa as they walk up on stage, unless he's got heel lifts in those shoes for uh, intimidation's sake. But... That is going to become a distinct advantage as we've seen all day long with Lawrence O'Toole on that single buck. And this is why I'm saying that Lawrence O'Toole is going to be the winner in this particular heat. That's my bet. But you, you're going with Brad DeLosa, yeah? No, it sounds like uh, Marcus's mic is off for whatever reason. I don't know, but uh, my my prediction is going to be uh, Lawrence O'Toole. Marcus said Brad DeLosa. And both of these guys are very, very strong on that discipline of single buck. So I think that's what it's going to come down to, really. Okay. Small final for the bronze medal position. Here we go. start by both the guys. Brad DeLosa was just maybe a bit faster, but uh, again, we've seen that doesn't really play a role. It's about who drops that cookie first, and it's going to be DeLosa by a hair as they both move over to the underhand chop now. O'Toole in the red on the right-hand side of your screen is hitting stroke for stroke with Brad DeLosa now. Brad DeLosa moving over to the other side of his block. Good big slabs coming out for DeLosa. Who will step off first? This is going to be a key moment right here. And it's going to be DeLosa stepping off first, but just by a little bit. And a little bit more urgency in Lawrence O'Toole's game now as he gets over to that single buck. And here's what I was talking about on the single buck. Both of these guys, really strong single buckers. And it looks like Lawrence O'Toole is using a little bit more of his body overall than Brad DeLosa. Brad DeLosa is looking actually quite fatigued there. And it's going to be O'Toole dropping the cookie first. Advantage O'Toole as we go to the standing block chop and a huge hookup for Brad DeLosa as he is struggling to keep the breath going and he strolls gingerly over to the standing block chop and Lawrence O'Toole does that confident saunter around to the backside of his block as he starts hammering from the second side. It looks like O'Toole is going to get this one clean and neat and there it goes Lawrence O'Toole wins this battle and will take the bronze medal here in St. Kilda Australia as Brad DeLosa is absolutely spent you can see it in his face you can see it in his swing every hit sticks the angles just aren't working for him one or two more drives should do it for the warrior Brad DeLosa as he finally gets through and I bet you He's thankful for that situation, and he's thinking about the same thing Mitch Argent's thinking about that beer later on, a refreshing, bubbly, amber cocktail. All right, so the guys are going up for the interviews, and these poor athletes are breathless and having to speak to the boys. Third place this year. Yeah, mate, I was, uh, I was pretty happy with that, you know. Pretty tough there in the final, especially after cutting the extra early race, other race early on. 
I know how the other boys are feeling the last few years. Yeah, that extra race will do it to you. And, mate, you only missed out on the, um, the big one, the grand final, by sort of a stroke, stroke and a half as well. So you, you certainly, you, you're living up to, to all of your standards. Are you feeling good? You're feeling fit? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, I didn't perform as good as I could today, but I was a bit flat and, you know, you can't be on top of your game all the time. Time for a beer? Oh, uh, maybe one. Probably, probably not. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Lawrence O'Toole there, ladies and gents. One of the absolute greats. Thanks, buddy. He's got inducted into the Australian Axemen's Hall of Fame as well. I reckon he will have a beer. So interesting to note the times of these two guys here. So Lawrence O'Toole with a 132.18 oh. and Brad Deloso with a 153.76. Oh. Their personal best for this format. Lawrence O'Toole at 102 and Brad Delos at a 57. So you know they're both absolutely gutted, tired as we take a look at the slow-mo here. And it was Brad Delosa getting away first and then coming to the underhand chop. And he actually left the underhand chop slightly ahead of Lawrence O'Toole as well. But uh, like I said, you know, that single buck was the difference maker for O'Toole. We'll take a look at that shortly as well. This should be the last hit for De Lawrence O'Toole there. And there you see the official times, 130, 178, 153.27. Wow, really different to their personal best, absolutely. And here you can see O'Toole, he just used every inch of that saw, or if we're being metric, every centimeter, um, to drop that cookie before Delosa. And you can see Delosa was just wasted by the time he got to the bottom of it. And then that little bit of tiredness affected his positioning, his angle, and then he just got hooked up and couldn't start it back up again, and then he was really in the deep grass there as he tried to catch up on that standing block chop, and it was just no contest after that. Lawrence O'Toole knew it, and he only had to have a couple of drivers at the end there, nice and relaxed style to take the bronze medal here today in St. Kilda. What a warrior, though. Brad Delosa is absolutely fantastic. And he's still going strong and still relevant in this sport after being in it for so many years and having so many successes. All right, so the crew working real hard to get that stage done as quickly as possible because you could see those heavy gray clouds in the background rolling in off the ocean. And that could mean there's a squall or two on its way inland. And we hope, we hope, we hope, fingers crossed, that uh, the rain does not start before we get this final out there. Um, nobody wants to see a rain delay in this particular situation with so much on the line for both of the guys in the big final, Braden Meyer and Mitch Argent. And uh, like I said, these teams are top notch at getting these decks ready to go in the safest and quickest possible manner for these athletes. And it looks like we are almost ready. The underhand chop blocks are in place. The standing block chops are in place and just about finished. And they're making the final cuts and measurements and markings on the stock saw and single buck block at the back of the stage there. And now the MS661 comes in to position. And a couple of, uh, couple of autographs here from Braden Meyer for some young fans there on the, the cookies that get cut off of those blocks. They actually get distributed out to the fans out there. And uh, Braden Meyer giving some, uh, some love to the fans in the audience. All right, Braden Meyer, Mitch Argent. We just say four minutes. Two pretty evenly matched guys here four in this minutes. case, I would say. Mitch Argent's had uh, success at this event in the past. Braden Meyer has had uh, international successes. That, that well. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see 
how these two guys managed to pull it out. I'm, I'm still rooting for Mitch Argent because it's about time that he's got himself a battle win against Braden Meyer. A couple of guys that are on the Chaparoos. And you can see Mitch Argent, his personal best is five seconds better than Braden Meyer. But we've seen a fantastic day by, by Braden Meyer here. And uh, the audience getting into it, getting pumped up by the boys there locally, keeping everything alive and screaming as we get ready for our grand finale here at the Steel Timber Sports Australian Trophy 2021 from St. Kilda. Last minute preps for Braden Meyer and Mitch Argent as they set their single bucks. Stock saws are already in place. Axes are already in place. This is the big adjustment for everybody to make sure that these saws are in exactly where they need them to be to start their competition. He's knocked off Lawrence O'Toole, who was his main rival. He beat him in the grand final. He's got to do over Mitch Argent, though, who is in unbelievable form on stand two, the big Queenslander. It all comes down to this. It's been a cracking day of competition. Both these guys have been informed. They've been cutting well. Everything's ready to rock and roll. We're going to hand it over to the judges. Give them one more big round of applause, everybody. There we go. Warming up those saws for 15 seconds. As you heard, Mitch Argent from Queensland going up against Victoria's Braden Meyer. And this is the Australian Trophy Final. Here we are. All right, good start. There's that deep angle style from both of the guys. Mitch Argent, I'm going to say, is just slightly ahead of Braden Meyer. No, excuse me, Braden Meyer managed to get to the bottom of that block ahead of Mitch Argent, but Mitch Argent was faster over to the underhand. Look at these two guys work the underhand chop. Both of them going for those quick hits. Braden Meyer moves over onto the other side, a little bit behind, maybe one stroke behind Mitch Argent. Wow, this is going to be a good battle. It's already started out well in these first two disciplines. And now, oh my goodness, Braden Meyer gets a hookup and he is slow to get off that block. Now, Mitch Argent has the advantage as they go to the single buck. With the advantage here in single buck, it could be a big deal for Mitch Argent to get onto that standing block chop and win this one. He's been cutting very well today. A little slow slog there. And Braden Meyer trying to play catch up. A big angle for Mitch Argent on that block. I don't know what happened there, but it looks like he is going to get through it first. And it, uh, it drops first. And now Mitch Argent. He has got a huge advantage over Braden Meyer, who looks fatigued as he gets that final cookie down. And Mar Mitch Argin is over on the standing block chop. Now moving over to the other side. Could it be that Mitch Argin is going to take this one down? Braden Meyer is so strong in these chopping disciplines, but he is well behind Mitch Argin. Is he going to catch up? He's gotten through here. No, he's not going to do it. Mitch Argent's going to win. Mitch Argent does it in a time of 124.89. A huge relief for that man who takes gold here today. Braden Meyer with a 133.47 in the silver position in second. What a fantastic final battle. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am patting myself on the shoulder for that call off the top of the show. What a great day for Mitch Argent and for Troy Mannering. Woohoo! I love it. What a fantastic fantastic battle absolutely amazing heat there just oh a nail biter right down to the wire what a great job by Mitch Argent today to take down one of the absolute strongest competitors in the world Braden Meyer we're going to hear from the winner right now Australian Champions Trophy winner for 2021 how does that sound yeah bloody beautiful yeah no it's been been a hard fought battle all day. You know, Brain's been the man to beat from the start. He won the time trial, so I was just happy to make the final. You just beat the rain. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Mitch Argent, your 2021 Australian Champion Trophy winner. I might just grab Braden very quickly here. How are you feeling, mate? Second place. I mean, nothing to be sneezed at, mate. You had an unbelievable day. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, mate. I'm knackered. I, uh, big fella like me don't do that much very often. How about Mitch as well? He's a, he's a stunning competitor, mate. Yeah, congratulations to Mitch. Um, it's uh, bloody good to see. He's a good competitor and um, great mate. And it's always hard to beat him, that's for sure. So, well done. Good on you, Braden. You're hard to beat yourself, mate. So, more props to Mitch because you are an unbelievable competitor yourself. You've definitely earned that frothy, mate. What's it going to be? 
Oh, I'll definitely help him drive. Anything we'll do at the minute. <laughs> If we could get a beer up at the stage post haste for Brayden Meyer, that'd be great. Thank you, ladies and gents, for turning out today. We do have the official presentation coming up very shortly. If you've got an umbrella and you'd like to stay around for that, it's something to be seen. You'll see all of our champions back here on the stage, including these two and the rest of the chopperoos. But thank you for turning out today here in St Kilda in a typical Melbourne fashion. The heavens have opened and the weather's turned on us. But we appreciate your attendance. Good on you guys. Check yourself. All right, look at this slow mo here. Well. A great start by both of these guys. The now, I, I believe I made the call that Mitch Argent dropped this cookie first, uh, but I think it was actually Braden Meyer, but Mitch Argent was just a little bit faster getting over to the underhead chop. Well, I was so close, though. Yeah, Mitch Argent didn't waste any time in getting those uh, head, head or the ear protection and the eye protection off and getting over to the underhand. So now in continuing the slow-mo over to the underhand shop, we already see that Mitch Argent has a couple of strokes in there as Braden Meyer started working, but we all know how good Braden Meyer is at this particular discipline with the underhand shop. Mitch Argent moves over to the other, other side, one stroke ahead of Braden Meyer, and uh, it was really down to, yeah, that split right there and moving over to the single buck and then a little hookup by Braden Meyer that just had him hang a little bit longer on the log than I'm, shing, I, I'm sure he wanted to. And uh, then on to the single buck. Now the single buck you could see here, Braden Meyer was searching for the oxygen. Deep breath by both of these guys who've been working hard all day long. And uh, what a battle it was. It really came down to that right there, that cookie drop by Mitch Argent. And then Braden Meyer, he was four or five strokes behind on the drop and then did his best to catch up with Mitch on the standing block chop. But that advantage was just too much for a good axe man like Mitch Argent. And he deservedly wins the Australian Trophy 2021 here in St. Kilda today. And how is that for timing? Just finishes up as the rain starts to fall. Unbelievable. So deserved celebration by Mitch Argent there, and you can see he is absolutely spent, and uh, he definitely deserves that beer, hey? <laughs> So here we have the overall standings. In 12th position, Josh Bakes, Jake Dingle making it to 11, 10, Daniel Gurr. On 9, it's Blake Meyer. Position 8, Chris Owen. 7, Brody Dingle. 6, Glenn Gillum. 5, Cody Steers. 4, Brad DeLosa just not making it to bronze. And then we have the three top guys of the day. Bronze medal goes to Lawrence O'Toole. Silver to Braden Meyer. And the big winner here at the Australian Trophy 2021, Mitch Argent. That was very, very impressive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And isn't Argent also for gold? Uh, I beg your pardon? Isn't Argent also... Uh, Argent? Argent, Argent is gold? Yes, yeah. Uh, oui, oui, huh? Uh, or is it silver? Oh, maybe you're right. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well he's golden today. He's golden no, silver no. today. Whatever. It's all good. <laughs> no doubt about that. Yeah. But all athletes were absolutely exhausted. Yeah. I've not seen athletes being as exhausted as they were today. They really gave their all, didn't they? Yeah, they put it all out on the floor there. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. And you could see that at the end of the competition, both of those guys were just sucking in the air, trying to keep going to the last end. You saw it with uh, with Lawrence O'Toole oh. and Brad DeLosa. Brad DeLosa Same, on a yeah. discipline that's normally his absolute discipline, the uh, single buck. And he was and he's like, oh, oh my God, God. <laughs> is this over yet? I mean, the boys battled really, really hard right to the very end. But Mitch Argent, yes, buddy, well done. His transitions were absolutely absolutely amazing yeah. and that like was a difference said, maker as well you yeah, know because the cookie you know he was second when the cookie fell but he was first he was first on, on the block, block by two strokes as well 
And that's that's yeah. absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, more competitions coming up, and and make sure not to miss out on everything that Steel Timber Sports has has in fit for you this season. You, you just saw it, eighth of May today. That was the big opening for the season with the Australian Trophy. We're going to move on to the Benelux Championships uh, on the third of July. The 31st of July is another big day with the rookie European Championships and the European Trophy. Of course, in August, we're going to have the German Championship on the 21st of August. Uh, in September, we'll have the World Trophy European Qualifier. That's going to be on the 12th of September. And on the 2nd of October, the individual World Championship Ooh, yes. will be taking place here in Munich. And of course... Uh, will be in this studio and making sure that you can see everything uh, you need uh, to watch. Um, of course, uh, we're going to have uh, the winner's ceremony coming up for you. We're not going to miss out on that. Just like you said, at the end of the competition, the rain came in. But uh, Larry Blamer, the GM of Steel Australia, he's going to hand over uh, the trophies in just a few moments. You can see the pictures now. People are still in a good mood, but uh, that, that's uh, what St. Kilda is like. You yeah. know, if, if the weather moves in from the sea, it can get very dark and very wet in, in a short matter of time. I mean, if you've ever lived by the ocean, you know that the weather can change in a matter of seconds. It's just like being in the high mountains, you know? Um, but it's, it's still it's great anybody's to see guess, so but many people staying for the winter ceremony. Yeah, I mean, That's you know, awesome. it's a bit of rain. It's not like they're made of sugar down there. There's some <laughs> tough people down there. Uh, and uh, you absolutely know they're going to enjoy themselves at every opportunity in St. Kilda. Absolutely. Uh, what about enjoyment? What was your favorite parts of the competition today? To oh, my God. To pick a favorite part? I don't know. That last battle between uh, Mitch Argent and, and Braden Meyer, I, I think that has to be a highlight for me for a while. Absolutely. Um, I really, really liked some of the earlier heats we saw. Semi-final. I, I, uh, I, can't, I can't really choose one, but I would say probably that one heat in the quarterfinal between uh, Glenn Gillum and Braden Meyer. That was pretty awesome as well. And also the one between Mitch Argent and Chris Owen. I mean, those were two heats that kind of stood out for me. Um, but uh, that last one, it was just absolutely incredible. As uh, Oh, it looks like we're going to have award ceremony finally here. And uh, yeah, the stage is wet. Luckily, that happened just after the last block drop. Oh, yes. Very happy to see that. But obviously, everybody uh, was really excited to see Steel Timber Sports back in business. And uh, you can see all the athletes, of course, Josh Bakes, Jake Dingle, Daniel Gerb, Blake Meyer, Chris Owen, Brody Dingle, Glenn Gillum, Cody Steers and Brad DeLosa having to stay in position for the top three. Yep. I'm pretty sure we're going to have them announced Oop. in just a few moments. There we see uh, Brad DeLosa and Mitch Argent slipping into position there on the side. Some massive arms. <laughs> I know. These are some oh, wow. big boys. These are some big boys. They're strong. And what's amazing is you don't realize it to look at these guys, but they can move quickly. For big guys, they can move quickly. So, Good story, yeah. yeah. Or as they say in Australia, Struth, mate. <laughs> so here comes the bronze medalist, Lawrence O'Toole. Also inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame down there, I heard, throughout this show. That's pretty awesome. That was for me as well, yeah. Well deserved, though. Absolutely. <laughs> the machine, Braden Meyer. That's not a spot we're used to seeing him in in second place. It's unusual, but I tell you what. It was battled and earned today. And I really enjoy because that's going to give him some extra motivation for the next competitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't like being on that step. He prefers to be on the top. Well, today on top, Mitch Argent. Yeah, buddy. Well, Nicely uh, done. Great competition. I wonder what his preparation looked like. Do you think he did a lot of running? I don't think any of these guys <laughs> do a lot of running. <laughs> but did he do any sort of running I'm sure he did he moved so well today yeah like you mentioned his transitions were fantastic I mean there's no two questions about it so these guys are going to enjoy themselves right now with a little bubbly and a little uh, a little uh, amber liquid later on and, and have a good time and yeah we hope you guys enjoyed that it was a, a great competition today oh absolutely fantastic and uh, well it's time to say goodbye to St. Kilda to all the spectators 
to the athletes, of course, Dan and Gaz, thanks so much, and, and the whole Steel Timber Sports team. It was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed myself. It almost felt like being there ourselves. At least uh, I would have loved A little bit. There, yeah. Dan and Gaz doing a great job down oh, there, by the way. Awesome. They were the stair masters today. I master the stairs. They were up and down those stairs doing <laughs> interviews with everybody every five seconds. It seems like they were great. And I love the Australian athletes with, with their short <laughs> interviews, but saying everything you need to know. It, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's time for a beer. It is. Yep. <laughs> How was that? Was it, was it okay? It was good. <laughs> but you know what? These guys were working everything on the table. They left it all out there. You cannot blame them for just wanting to be done with the interviews and going and having a rest before the next thing. So what are you going to do, right? It was just a, a great competition today and glad to be back at it. Well, Troy, it felt a bit like Easter and Christmas on one day. I, I really enjoyed myself. Uh, thanks again uh, to everybody in Australia, in St. Kilda, for making this day so very special for us. And we're going to say goodbye with the highlights of the day and hopefully see you soon for the next Steel Timber Sports competition.